I'm going to start um, in front of you. You can see the main topics, okay? And I want you, Great Talks, to now know because if you're not knowing at this point in time that paper one is these two topics business environments and operations and paper two then i really don't know okay so there you can see an outline of the main topics also your exam papers and um, i mean your topics for the exams and subtopics okay and you have to believe that you can pass you really have to believe Okay, but uh, as you and I and your educators know, you cannot go and write our subjects on general knowledge. You have to sit and, and study and uh, you need to remember what you've studied. It's no use you uh, study and you can't remember anything. Then you must revisit or look at your study method. And then and, and, and believe me, we don't want to, to, to mark long stories. You need to recall facts, okay? And uh, we're going to do, and, and, and I'm going to do my best today. I just apologize for the time uh, to help you do your best, okay? So there's business environments. We have seen the topics. The pre-test, Mrs. Gordon, can I go straight ahead or must I give them a few minutes to just round up the pretest. Okay, I think I'll give you because you have the the booklets. So uh, I'm gonna give you so five minutes just to look at your answers. You were supposed to have. Um, I didn't see. I think yeah, I think five minutes is is quite fine, Mrs. Peter. Okay. So I'll give, I'll give you guys five minutes. So just look at your answers once again, and then um, we're gonna take it from there. My advice is always, and that's also always to my learners, start with section C. Just number clearly the section heading, uh, section C, and your question and the number at the top. Then you write your essay, and uh, you don't have to worry that we won't see your work. We have to go through that whole exam book and look at your responses, okay? Because question one can be really complicated at times. So if you have challenges getting, if you are one of those learners that where you're starting with your essay and they say only 10 minutes left, then I would advise you to start with section C. Then you go to section A and then section B. Don't leave section A for last because one answer in section A is a double mark. Okay, so that's my advice. Uh, let's go to the pre-test, multiple choice. Um, now, you can write on your question paper. No one said you can't. Now, with multiple choice, there is um, the right answer and a distractor that almost looks like the right answer. And then there's two options that's totally wrong. And it's um, up to you to identify those, right? And you will be able to do so successfully if you know your work, all right? Um, and if you have identified the distract and the correct answer, rule out those wrong answers then you don't have to look at them again and the other thing is use capital letters right for multiple choice it's just the number and the correct letter next to the number so use capital letters that's what what i want to say with regards to the multiple choice with the words in the block you will also see there's the correct answer and the distractor and i have grouped them uh, for you in color so that you can see, okay? Like there's quality and then there's standards, horizontal, vertical, internship, learnership, time-related piecemeal, okay? So look at, and whatever you have dealt with, rule it out because then it, um, 
eliminates the number of, of, of answers that you have to, possible answers that you have to look at. Okay, and with this question, you have to write the word exactly as it appears in that block. If the examiner provides an abbreviation, you will write the abbreviation next to the correct number. Okay, you will not write the thing out in full. Like say if there's an F, for instance, BCA, you will write if that's your option that you select, BCEA. Okay, so this is for the missing words. With matching columns, you will see the tricks of the examiner here as well, giving you two answers for one concept. And uh, what is really uh, obvious here is that the examiner is using similar words. You can see the A starts with ensures full involvement of all employees, ensure that customers needs answer. So you know now, one is the answer and one is the distractor. B provides regular press releases. Right here at the bottom, provides reliable data to management kindly. Okay, uh, theoretical and practical training opportunities, practical training opportunities. Okay, so um, it's important for you to identify the distractor and look at uh, the examiner is using similar words as you can see there okay so now i have given you the tricks of the examiner so let's look at your answers there we go okay one 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 is b and that is because of the fact that cetus receives 80 percent of that one percent levy that businesses must pay businesses who earn 500,000 and more uh, on the uh, payrolls. So the answer is D. And once again, I encourage you to use capital letters because it's better for us in the marketing center to see uh, your responses because some of your handwriting is challenging, challenging. Okay, uh, there we have our answers. Okay, 1.12B, all right, and DCA. And then one to one is um, the learnership. Okay. Then we have vertical. You can see there by vertical, it's a manufacturer and it's a motor spares company. And clearly, they're not in the same sector, right? Manufacturers is uh, putting the whole McCoy, the car together, and the spares is just parts. So obviously, they're not in the same. Uh, business sector so uh, it's vertical okay and when a manufacturer buys a space it's, it looks like a backward movement because they want that supplies to put their car uh, together then the concept of quality one to four was basically a giveaway and then piecemeal according to the number of items all right so that is the missing words the matching of the columns, the learnership, that is E, theoretical and practical training opportunities, and then market development is G, existing products in new market, the business wants to branch out, okay, uh, to new territory. Recruitment is H, find, seek and find potential candidates for available vacancies, and we know vacancy is an open position that needs to be filled. Total quality management, the answer there is A. Uh, that's about the whole business enterprise needs to be about quality involving all the employees. That was the key there. Public relations function, the answer is B, regular press releases, because we know this function has to do with uh, improving the image of the business okay the last one that was the distractor uh, that provides reliable that's admin function okay so there's our answers i hope you have marked okay and you've listened to because in every um, answer here there's a clue and if you know your work uh, you will find that correct answer okay boys and girls let's proceed to questions uh, question number two okay 
Now, it's important for you to also understand the cognitive verbs that we use in our questions. And we use them over and over and over, right? Name is lower order and name state list will always come with asking you for a particular number of facts. Okay, now, if we ask you for four pestle factors, we will mark you, if you decide to ask, ah, we, I will give them five or six. We will not even look at number five or six. So at year two, that particular number of uh, facts that we want. So name is no split marks. You get uh, one mark for each pestle factor. And just know social includes cultural and demographic. So you will uh, just get one mark for saying that. Environmental also includes physical, which is also natural and international which is also global. So you will just get one mark uh, if you, even if you uh, list all of that. So for that, just one mark. And uh, boys and girls, I want you to also um, mark your uh, answers, right? Number 2.2. .2. Now, outline the rights of employees according to the Labor Relations Act. Learners often forget uh, when it comes to this act to study the rights of employers and the rights of employees. Outline for six marks, meaning that we will give you a double mark at the end of the fact. So you cannot just give us a um, one word answer or you need to go a little bit into depth, not too much. OK, but you have to write a brief explanatory sentence okay so our line is to give us a little bit more okay not too much depth like i said but enough set to earn you the double ticks at the end of the fact and important boys and girls or shall i call you ladies and gents for employers because learners often get confused with um, employers and employees we asking for employers and then you give us the rights of employees so you need to be in the moment there at your uh, desk, there where you're sitting, reading every question carefully and uh, don't get carried away. So outline, if you know your work for six marks, we just want three um, points in your answer. Can you see there, right? And I've highlighted keywords that will help you remember the employee, employers have the right to a lockout. Uh, in, to form employers organizations. Okay, this is actually just unions for employers, but we don't want to confuse you. So instead of saying employee, we say employer organizations. A bargaining council for collective bargaining, okay, and we know of uh, the CCMA, right? Dismiss employees who are engaged in an unprotected strike. An unprotected strike is a, an illegal strike, okay? Whoever's organized this fight did not follow all uh, the channels as stipulated in the LRA. And the right not to pay employees as they can part in. Okay, so there's your uh, answers. As you can see, it's um, not too much debt, but enough said so that we can uh, award you that double ticks at the end. And the other piece of advice is if you know the cognitive work, outline for six marks. You know you have to have three points in. And then boys and girls, please write in point form. It's easier for us to read. If you're not sure of your facts, write a little bit more because we can award part marks. Because we, if we don't ask for a particular number of facts, we have to read all your responses. And if we can get to six, we will get to six. Okay, but we trust you're going to know your work. All right. So this is 2.2. Okay, 2.3 is um, grade 10 work. We started this in grade 10. Okay, the SWOT analysis. And uh, in grade 12, we taught you that it's part of that strategic management process. As you know, uh, it's actually the second step, which is conducting an industrial analysis uh, or an environmental scanning. SWOT, as we know, is the best by far because SWOT uh, analyze all the business environments. The SW is internal, and the O and the T, opportunities and threats, external. Then, just to refresh your memory, 
Uh, the other two that you have learned in grade 12 was FESTA, and that one focused only on the macro business environment, and then Porter's Five Forces, which is uh, analyzing competition in the market environment. Okay. Now, when we do a, a SWOT analysis, sometimes it, it's difficult because they, sometimes a strength looks like an opportunity and a weakness looks, but this is how you're going to distinguish it. Strength is internal positive aspects. You know, things that the business already has, that's to its advantage. Weaknesses, internal negatives. Now, I want you to make that additional note there uh, on your uh, booklet. Opportunities, external positive. And I always tell my learners that it's any circumstance where the business can generate income. Threats, on the other hand, external negatives, which can lead to the closure of the business. So let's look at the scenario, okay? And uh, once again, when you get a scenario, read the questions first, and then you go to the scenario. And be ready and prepared with your highlighters, other color pens, etc. You know for the exam, you have to write either in blue or black, okay? Uh, and like I said, you can write in your question paper. Not, no one says you can't. So there's the scenario. Okay, so let's look at the strength. Okay, and uh, yeah, when we give you a certain format to answer, like we have a table there, four quadrants, use that. It's easier for you and it's easier for us in the marking center to mark. Always read, Rosa. Thank you, ruler. It's, a lot of learners are very ruler shy. They own million rand phone, but they can't, you know, afford their rulers. So take your ruler and structure your work, draw that uh, format for us. Okay, so there we go. Employees are hardworking and committed. Employees, we know it's internal, it's human resources, and it's a positive, internal positive. Weaknesses, the business did not have sufficient capital. That's a financial resource that there's a lack of internal negative. Okay. Opportunities, an international company wants to buy the handbags to sell overseas. Can you see another opportunity for the business here to make money? So it's an external positive, right? And the threat, general leather bags is struggling due to high crime area. And that's beyond the control of the business, as you can see. So it's external negative. And if that business, this business, general leather handbags, does not put uh, measures in place, obviously, this high crime can affect it and it can lead to closure. Okay, so let's move to our next question. Once again, um, we're giving you scenarios um, 2.3.2. Okay, it says suggest one strategy to address the threat. Okay, we have identified the threat as that high crime area. So now you can see that uh, it's a um, higher order because you have to suggest a practical threat, something that can eliminate that threat. And then you can see it provide more security, work closely with the community police, anything that's relevant that can address that problem of the high crime. Even employing a security guard, okay, uh, CCTV cameras, or you know, stuff like that. Um, but secure the business, that's, that's the thing that we want there. Right, uh, and we just want one strategy, so you give us one, don't waste your time. Now, the pillars, this is a section class of 2024 that learners struggle with, the Triple B E E Act. It's the only act with pillars, right, and the only act with a scorecard. We know it's about empowerment. You see that word black, very prominent in the name of the act but it's a generic term for people of color. Okay, so let's see if we can identify correctly. They donated bicycles to a cycling club in the local community. Okay, for identify, no explanations needed, right? Always, we want the concept there. Social responsibility, it's about giving back, uplifting society. Learnership program has been offered, learnership has to do with, we have seen in section A that practical and theoretical that can lead to a qualification skills development, okay? And uh, bicycles are supplied by 
Uh, Ibaya Sikile Traders, a medium-sized business with black ownership, enterprise and supplier development. And with these pillars, you have to name the exact name of the pillar, okay? Just once again, there's the five triple BEE pillars for you. And I have uh, given you some key notes there so that you can uh, just remember it by. Management control, and you must say the full name. You cannot just say management uh, matriculants. You must say management control. Appoint black people in management positions. Can you see that word black is very prominent? Okay, because it's about broad-based black economic empowerment. Ownership, include black people in shareholding, partnerships, franchisees. Enterprise and supply development, we've seen it in our previous example. Um, if we can go back, that 2.4.3, this um, suppliers was also black owned, as you can see. And this is where why we had to identify enterprise and supply. Skills development, engage black employees in skill development initiatives, provide learnerships and learning programs to black employees. And then you can see I'm emphasizing that word, okay? Social responsibility, and, and this is about just to contribute towards social investment, community pro projects, and we know it's for upliftment purposes. So there's the pillars again. I hope you've made a, a note of it. And when you recall it, it must be exactly as it is there, okay? Um, I hope you've made some notes of uh, just the keywords because learners find it really difficult, specifically if we ask questions on the application of these um, pillars. You can see the application meaning the business must implement. So we're going to put a lot of verbs in our sentences here. Appoint, include, invest. So uh, business must do stuff to apply these pillars. Okay. I hope I'm not too fast. I'll give you a minute just to get that keywords. Um, and I trust that you will remember. And, you know, I always say to my learners, uh, five is the magic number. But start with three. And, you know, expand it a little bit out to, to five. Right? Because with these fillers, when we ask you to discuss, we will split the mark. Okay? Let's go to the next question. And then and, and this type of question is uh, very popular, where we give you the scenario and we will say, quote, or sometimes identify, okay? But one, we just wanted you to quote. Now, quote, matriculants, you know now, you have to rewrite the statement exactly as it appears in the block or in the scenario. Now, you can count yourself lucky here. Yeah? I don't think the examiner will give you as easy a scenario like this, because these days, scenarios also come with distractors. Okay, it was easy for this one because there was only two statements, okay, that was applicable to the EEA, all right? And if we look at the EEA, the, the purpose of the EEA is to eliminate discrimination on the basis of any diversity issues, okay? Uh, there you can see young women, that is age and gender all in one, and disabilities you can see also as a diversity issue. So quote, and I don't know why business learners are so lazy to write the full sentence. Quote the full sentence. It is said in the uh, marking center that we can't award this easy marks because learners don't quote the full sentence. Now, right at the beginning of your question paper, there is a time timetable that you can time yourself by. And it's vital that uh, whoever's invigilating give you the time up if you don't have your own watch. And you can time yourself based on that. All right, recommend, once again, practical ways. These are practical ways aspects uh, or, or, or actions that the business must engage in to comply with this act. And recommend is a higher order verb, so we will allocate a double mark at the end of the fact. So recommend for six marks, once again, 
you know your work, you know you have to have three points in your answers of which we will allocate the double mark. There, I've highlighted it for you. So once again, it, it's things or actions that the business must implement, engage in, in order to comply. And uh, there you can see they must guard against discriminatory appointments, implement an employment equity plan, okay? And this plan, as you know, is revised every two years. This is a plan that the business will uh, explain to the Department of Labor as to well how they're going to work towards a diverse workforce. Right, and they have to submit this employment to the Department of Labor. Okay, and it's, uh, as we know, compulsory for businesses with 50 employees and more. All right, so this is 2.5.2. I hope I'm not going too fast, boys and girls. Right. There we go. Discuss two integration strategies. Once again, discuss as a cognitive verb, we will split the marks. And we're asking you two integration strategies. Okay? Now, you can write yourself, there's two strategies that starts with an I and two strategies, groups of strategies that starts with a D. And then in, in the exam center, I can see how learners get confused with, because it's, it's sometimes tricky names. Not sometimes, these strategies are tricky to recall, specifically the diversification strategies. So it's in integration, okay, intensive, diversification, and defensive. Right, so now let's go back to the integration strategies. Okay, a business combines where are we now? 2.6.1. Business com uh, forward vertical integration, that's the name of the strategy. Sorry. Now you must say forward vertical. You cannot just say vertical. You must say forward vertical integration. Okay, so you name it. We've awarded two marks for the explanation. Business combines with or takes over its distributors. Okay, so it's a forward movement, a factory uh, buying up perhaps a retail store so that they can ensure sales. Can you see that forward movement? Or a business in the primary sector, a farm, buys up. Uh, a factory. Okay, let me just get my facts right. Distributors, let's say rather go with the secondary sector business buying up a retail store to ensure distribution. Okay, forget about that other example that I gave. Backward vertical. Let's go to the secondary sector, factories buying up let's say cool buying up a farm so that they can you know get their supplies from the farm you can see there combines with or takes over its suppliers and so that they can continue and you need to say backward vertical integration okay so you can re really sit and look at those sectors primary secondary what sector the business is in if a factory buys up a retail store we know retail store and wholesale, that is tertiary sector, and it's a forward, because everything starts with primary, right? Okay, horizontal, business takes control or incorporates other businesses in the same industry, which produce or sell the same goods and services. Okay, so horizontal integration is really not um, difficult to um, identify. Okay, but when you say forward or when you uh, give answers on the vertical integration you must use that word forward with vertical all right and backward with vertical okay all right let's move on and once again if we ask you a particular number of facts we will just you know mark the first two once again here yeah. Okay. 
with this question. Advice, once again, higher order verb, and we will, with a higher order verb, you need to learn to identify these verbs that you use in the sentences. We will give you a double mark at the end of the verb, right? And for four marks, advice for four marks, you need to have two uh, points in your answer. Okay, don't confuse strategy evaluation. Matrix, please highlight that term, strategy evaluation, with the steps in the strategic management process. Don't confuse it um, with that. Please, if you... Um, and then, and then we will later on see uh, the steps in the strategic management process. Evaluation is about looking at did the strategy work uh, or not. And if not, can you see here later on, take corrective action where necessary. Set specific dates for control and follow up. Okay, because remember the business sets the, the, bench, the benchmark with the strategy and then implement the strategy and evaluation is now really going back and see did the, did the strategy work uh, or not. And this is what the business will do if you look at the steps. Okay, I've highlighted it for you. Examine the underlying basis of the business strategy. What is it that they wanted to achieve by implementing the strategy? Then they look at uh, how they implemented the, uh, the process, uh, how they implemented the strategy. Then they compare the expected performance with a benchmark, right? And if it does not compare, then they have to correct, okay? Control and follow up and decide on what is it that they have envisaged in that strategy before it was implemented, okay? So evaluation, once again, in the back of your mind, you need to think, uh, they look at how the implementation went and what is it that went wrong that they need to correct. Okay, you can see there two bullets uh, in end. I have asked you to please write in point four. Okay, so now question number two, point one. All right. Four rights of consumers in terms of the NCA. Now, this is an act that learners really, and when it comes to the rights of consumers under the act, don't get confused with the rights of consumers under the CPA. But Trick says also rights of consumers under the CPA. And I want you to make a note for yourself and write these rights down and clearly distinguish it, the rights for the NCA and the rights for the CPA. So that when we ask you uh, on any act, the National Credit Act, then you know. Okay, and you will see that the rights for the CPA is you know tends to go more in detail and it's more rights okay compared to the rights uh, under the nca and with these rights we don't want explanations when we ask you the rights matriculants we want the you have to respond with the exact wording of the right get the reasons for refusing credit receive fair and responsible marketing okay because the laws and acts you know, laws acts the same thing, is really specific. So when we ask you rights, you need to recall it exactly uh, as it is there, specifically also for the rights under the CPA in particular, because we're going to penalize you if it's not the exact wording. Number 2.2, outline our CETAs are funded, and this question has really matured matriculants. It's a very popular question. If you look at past papers, it's always been tested. Okay, how it's uh, the CETAs are funded, and the other one is the role of the CETAs. And don't get confused. Okay, how it's funded is where the money comes from, and we've just given you this other uh, ways as well: surplus funds from the government, funds received from rendering their services. We know the one percent levy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, donations from businesses, uh, we just want, and, and for outline, we will always give you a double tick, as you can see there at the top, no split marks. So for four marks, we just, and then and, and, and if you know the cognitive verbs, can you see how easy it is uh, for you to 
to give your layout in the answer, right? When you know these cognitive verbs. And I really want you to, to start looking at it, see when we split the mark and see when we don't split the mark, okay? Because sometimes for two marks, you won't believe me, we get half a page or even a page just for two marks because learners don't want to um, listen in class. And then and when they get the opportunity like this, they don't want to listen as well. So please take another look and a good look at these uh, cognitive verbs that we use in, in the answer. I think that would put you more at ease and uh, you will be more calm in, in, in giving us your response and a good layout so that you can uh, obtain that maximum mark uh, to the question. Once again, there's another question on strategies, scenario, and the, the key is, matriculants, what did I say? You read the questions first and then you go to the scenario, right? And you will be armed with your highlighters, like I said, other color pens, etc. cetera, uh, and you know it's blue or black. Okay, there you can see I've highlighted it's uh, two business in the same industry selling the same products. There you can see Mamela stationers, they specialize in stationery. And they have merged with Mantla bookstores. And is that also sells stationery? Okay, we can't go wrong here, it's horizontal integration. Okay, and then explain for that cognitive verb before I go to that question. Identify, guys, we don't want explanations, okay? We really don't want explanations there. For identify, you will get a double mark. So if it's two marks, you just give us the concept. Explain the advantages of diversification strategies. Now, these uh, diversification strategies, really risky strategies. The business ventures into a new territory. We see with that conglomerate, uh, uh, etc., or the horizontal diversification where they combine an unrelated product with an existing uh, product, okay, and reach new customers, etc., or with a concentric diversification, they take uh, a related product, but they form a total new product that appeals to existing customers. So those words in the strategies, you really need to familiarize yourself with. Okay, um, so what is the advantages? Increased sales, you can see it's a statement that we can know. And look at where we place the tick and business growth, another tick. So you write a statement and a supporting statement. Okay, why do they wanna uh, increase sales? For business growth purposes, as you can see there. Improves the business's brand, tick and image tick. Okay, so you cannot give us vague sentences. Sometimes you give us vague sentences, then we cannot give you the second uh, split mark. So write and construct proper sentences, matriculants, please. Okay, so once again, to explain, we split the marks. Identify, no explanations needed because we give you a double mark and we just want the concept. The next question, there is the strategic management process now. Uh, if you can remember back, just to refresh your memory, what did I say? Don't confuse it with the steps in the evaluation of the strategy, okay? If you look at the strategies that we study, it's all in, embedded in this process, basically, right? And we've asked it for six marks, so you can give us that first three steps in the strategic management process, okay? Um, I always say, when you see a process, you see uh, development stages or whatever, study it in chronological order as it's supposed to follow. But once again, if you can't remember it in that order, you can give it to us in any order. But the best thing is to study it logically in the order. First of all, business should review and analyze their vision and mission statement and look at the placement of the tick. Right? And this is where we will place it. Uh, if you don't write like that and you write vaguely, you might just get one more. Conduct an environmental analysis. Remember the other concept that I gave you for that? I said industrial analysis. And sometimes, so you can just write above environmental analysis, write there industrial analysis. And these are the industrial analysis tools. 
the SWOT based on, we can say industrial analysis tools or models. And as you know, the other one is Porter's Five Forces, which is not mentioned there. Implement the strategy tip using a template such as an action plan, etc. etc. Okay. And then the next thing is to monitor the strategy. And lastly, we know it's evaluate the strategy. And with evaluation, there's also a series of steps. So don't confuse this. And you can mark this very, very important. I've seen it in every paper one. If it's not part of an essay on strategies, we always ask it in section B. Okay, let's continue. Okay, there we have a scenario. Once again, we want you to identify and we want a concept here. Okay, in scenarios, we always get a clue. Okay, the clue here is um, that first sentence is just a statement. Nothing to do uh, with the act. The second statement, they refuse to accept a valid medical certificate of a sick worker. And we know that uh, the act that we need to identify gives us provisions uh, with regards to sick leave. With, because when a worker is sick, the worker takes off, you know, sick leave, right? And what act is that? Nothing other than the BCEA. And as you can see there, you can abbreviate it as well. But just be careful if you don't know the exact abbreviation, rather write out the full name of the act. Because if you miss one letter, it, there's also a problem there. And can we see once again for identify? We don't want you to explain matriculants. Okay, discuss other actions that may be considered non-compliance with the act identified in question 251. Now, this is um, often a problem because it's now a follow-on question. In other words, if you get the identification wrong, you also run the risk of losing this four marks. Once again, discuss. Can you now uh, deduct how we are going to mark? We will split the marks. Can you see there? Explain, discuss, and this is also two cognitive verbs that we use in the essay. When we get there, I'll point that out. Okay? Matriculants, you cannot now use the information in the scenario. Look here, the question is asking you for other uh, actions. Okay? There we go. And for this act, you need to know the provisions of the act. Okay, in terms of working hours, in terms of leave, uh, overtime, etc. And I always tell my kids, if you study the BCEA without knowing the numbers provided by this act, then there's no need. You cannot give us long stories. You need to tell us for working hours, five-day work week, not longer than nine hours uh, per day. So non-compliance for that provision would be allow the workers or force the workers to work, let's say, 12 hours for five day work. That's not according to that provision. Can you see? So non-compliance is just contrary to what uh, is in that provision. So you can use that as well. OK, can you see the note here at the bottom? We will not give you a mark if you give us um, this fact here because it was in the scenario and we clearly wanted other actions, all right? So don't rewrite what's in the scenario. Okay, is there any questions at this stage? All right, does not seem so. Okay, with regards to the next question, PESTO. This is also great teamwork. We need to now know what PESTO stands for, political, and uh, please use that first E for economic. Economic, social, which includes demographical and cultural, technological, legal, environmental, which includes physical and international. Okay, that may pose challenges to businesses. You see, I've highlighted that pose challenges. What is a challenge for Triglands? It's a problematic situation um, that makes it difficult for business to operate. So now you must look at the factor and how it might pose a challenge. How will it be uh, a problem? 
Okay, you can see for environmental, uh, business might be used uh, chemicals or ingredients that may be harmful to customers. Okay, that's something that's a challenge for business. Measures to dispose of business waste may be expensive, right? So anything that's difficult for the business regarding that best of factor, right? So you need to zoom in on that. Don't give us about, um, we asking you environmental and technological, and then you speak about other best of factors. You need to read your questions, okay? Read jobs. Technological, okay, this is the era that you were born in, should be, you know, come up just like that. Technological, we know it's a fast changing environment and just keeping up and be aware of the latest technology, that's a challenge for business, right? And then we know also the new technology is expensive and some businesses cannot afford it. Another problem might be, uh, if I can add there, but we have to write for maximum of four, and for explain, we split the marks. So if we know it, just two points in the answer. Another one is when the new technology is there, the staff uh, might struggle to operate the new technology. Okay? So that's also a problem. So when you see the question being posed like that, um, how these factors might pose challenges, anything regarding that challenge that makes it difficult for business. Okay? All right. So... The Porter's Five Forces. Now, matriculants, can you see my note there? You need to know the exact name of the force. So you must say power of bias. You cannot just leave that power of out and just write bias or just write suppliers or components. That's wrong because if you write it that first, just like that, it looks like components of the market environment and you will not get um, the marks. So you must say power of buyers, power of suppliers, etc. right? We're asking you for four, so we will uh, look at the first four responses. And name, no explanations needed, right? Name and list, as you can see, these lower order verbs always comes with a particular number of facts, okay? Outline, what did I say about outline? I said... Not too much depth, but you write in a brief explanatory sentence so that you can get the two marks at the end of the fact. So outline for six marks. What now? Three points in our answer. The advantages of diversification strategies. I've elaborated a bit on that strategies. It's growth strategies. Uh, and there we go. Okay. Brief sentence, it's a nice full sentence. We can make sense of it um, as markers in the exam center and you get your marks, okay? All right, so can you see that question? Previous question was how CETAs uh, are funded and now we're asking you the role. So there's no excuse, okay? I told you it's a, a very popular question. For explain, we split the mark. For four marks, explain, just two points in your answer. And once again, if you're not sure of your facts, write a little bit more. Because if we don't give you a particular number of facts, once again, then we must mark up until that maximum of four. Um, and here's also another note. Use the one pages for your answers. They are shorter and summarized, but will still get you to the maximum amount of marks. Okay, but also uh, just together with that, uh, the one pages is not adequate if you want to achieve your 80 to 100 percent. You have to add more facts, so you will have to sit with that one page and your core notes, right? Um, when you study and you you set the bar really high, and we're going to set the bar high, we're going to get 80 percent. I'm telling you, right. There's a scenario, and this is also a very popular question, uh, where we combine the uh, business environment with the extent of control. At times, we give you also uh, a business, and you have to identify the sector that the business is in. Okay, but in this scenario, we um, did not um, give you business to identify what sector it was in. Okay, we 
look at Sam, Zam attorneys are experiencing a lot of problems lately. Manager, managing partner, Mr. McCoya lacks adequate management skills. The bank notified ZA, that is now Zam attorneys, about an increase in the interest rate of their loan. Tepo Law Incorporated offers similar services at lower, okay, as set up uh, in the same building. Right now, um, there you can see we have already identified the challenges for you. I've highlighted keywords in that challenges uh, that will tell you the environment. We know the three environments, micro environment, market and macro. Micro is the only internal environment. Okay, market is external and macro is also external. Now, class, for us to identify the uh, environment correctly, we need to know the components of these environments. And if you look at what I've highlighted, management falls under resources. So it's a micro environment. Okay, and we know it's the only environment okay, that one interest rate falls under the economic, the first E of PESTO. And that one, as you can see, Tepo Law Incorporated is also a law firm who's now offering. So, and, and Zam Attorneys is also a law firm. All right, and you can see market, and that has to do with competition because it's two firms, and, and this one offering the lower prices is going to lure Sam attorney's customers now. Okay, so there we've identified correctly. Okay, full control. Okay, only environment that has full control. Macro, no control. Market, limited or partial control. Right, and we want you to answer the extent of control like that. Once again, for this question, can you see there was a format given to you, a table? redraw the table it makes it so much easier for you right you can even number uh, as it being numbered there 4.4.1 you look at the question right it says identify the business environment once again no explanations needed no split marks okay 4.4 and then and you link it with that environment okay you cannot go wrong you have to uh, obtain the six marks you have to because this is great ten work okay strategies again and this strategy is really appearing a lot so what does it tell you you have to know the groups of strategies the names of the strategies under that four groups integration intensive diversification you have to know these groups of strategies because if it's not in an essay and strategies it will be asked in section B and even in section A as well. Okay, name any two. There we go. Intensive uh, strategies, market penetration, market development, product development. And intensive because the business really want to increase their sales um, and increase their market share, etc. What is market share? It's the number of customers of the business. And when we say increased market share, business wants to increase that number of customers. Right? We see the strategy's name. No explanations needed once again. Two, we just want two. Right. Identify. Matriculants, what did I say? No explanations needed. So there you have a little scenario. You can see there. Um, Five forces model that applies to Bobby's Barbershop in each statement below. Okay, and uh, if you can just, in the 4.2.1 scenario, can you just uh, make your sentence right? It must say Billy's Barbershop Boutique opened, you put open there, offering services at lower prices than Bobby's hairdresser, full stop. Okay, it's a little bit confusing there in the scenario. So, what is this force? It's two businesses in the same area. I'm sure you will get that one. Power of competitors. And what did I say? Or you can say, can you see that forward slash competitive rivalry? You must say the full name of the force. You cannot just say competitors. It's power of competitors or competitive rivalry. 
you see the identify, no split marks, no explanations needed just for giving us that concept, a double tick. Bobby's Barbershop only needed a small amount of capital to start with business, okay? Uh, and sometimes it's difficult because this four to five process actually looks at how difficult it is for businesses to enter this market and stay competitive, right? And uh, capital is one of those difficult barriers, okay? And when I say barriers, I think you got the force. Now, threat slash barriers of new entrants, and that new entrance, entrance is new businesses to the market. But you cannot say businesses. What did I say? You need to recall the exact name of the force. And for four marks identified, you see just a concept, double marks, and there you have your four marks. Let's move on. Less two business environments. Where are we now? Less two business environments and state the extent of control that businesses have over each environment. Okay, state means you just give us the control. We don't want you to go in depth, okay? Uh, and use the table. Use the table. When we give you a table, use the table. Okay, I see 4.3 is not uh, in the booklet, but okay, just follow with me. Uh, use a table. And, 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 and if the table if the table is given in your question paper, always redraw the table. Because the marking guidelines is set up like that, it makes it easier for you and easier for us to mark. So we just want two business environments, so you can give us any two. And there's the extent of control, micro, full control, market limited, or partial control, and macro, no control for four marks. Okay. Uh, sorry, 4.3 is not in your booklet, as I can see there, but you can make some quick notes for yourself there. Um, or this is something that, that's in the back of your mind. I think you, you know this one. Right. Can you see there? That's great teamwork. We cannot get it wrong. It's really a sad day if you get this wrong matrix. Okay. Let's go to the defense of strategies. Now, this is a group of strategies that the business is now defending its position in the market. Okay, so um, what is the name of the strategies? Um, there's three, the retrenchment. Okay, retrenchment is terminating the employment contract of employees for operational reasons. We know that they cannot afford to pay um, the employees anymore because that salary and wage cost components, huge cost component. And as a result, business people really sometimes need to make harsh decisions and lay off the workers, so it's retrenchment. Uh, can you see the mark allocation there? We've allocated two for naming and one for explanation in subnets of three. The second one is divestiture. Now, please, Matrix, can you see what I've written there? Familiarize yourself with this term divestiture and this is disposing or selling some assets or divisions that are no longer profitable or productive okay and we will only accept that word no other versions of the word just divestiture and the other one is liquidation can you see the difference between divestiture and liquidation liquidation is they at the end of their rope now. There's nothing that they can do. So what the business do does now is they sell all the assets so that they can uh, gain some income to pay off uh, their creditors. Okay. So look at the difference between divestiture and liquidation, and don't confuse liquidation with liquidity. We get that a lot. Liquidity is not liquidation. Liquidity is to have enough cash available in the short term so that the business cannot go insolvent or bankrupt in the long term, all right? So do something there in your booklet so that you can remember the two terms. You have to say liquidation and not liquidity. 
sorry for me going on like that, but um, learners, you know, lost a lot of marks because of the fact that they get so confused. Okay. Right. Uh, so let's move on. And once again, when we ask for a particular number of facts, we will just adhere in the marking guidelines. We will just mark the first two. Okay. Advice. Write there in your booklet, higher order. And advice will be a double mark at the end of the fact. So for four marks, we just want two um, bullets in your answer. Right? No split marks. Can you see there? So once you start getting used to the cognitive verbs, right? You use at the verb. Uh, I mean, you look at the verb. Read your question, read the mark allocation. That's very important uh, so that you can lay out your response. Okay, there you can see non-compliance with COIDA. Now, COIDA is Compensation for Occupational Injuries and Diseases Act, okay, with the emphasis on compensation. And with this act, as you know, the injury must happen in the workplace, okay? You say there, uh, and then we want non-compliance, meaning the business is not doing what they're supposed to do in terms of COIDA. Okay, um, so you need to know, this is actually penalties that we're asking. Can you see how we've played around with the wording? Okay, business can be fined for refusing to submit the claim or contravening the act. Business are found guilty of any offense. They will face heavy fines based in prison and two different facts, even though they're speaking of fines there as well. Can you see it's different? Okay. So that's the consequences. And we did not say uh, out directly um, penalties. You see what the examiner did was play around with wording. Then you need to be as cool as a cucumber when you sit there with your business paper. All right. Armed with your prep. Uh, and you're ready uh, for this subject. I don't even want to mess with my <laughs> technology here. So let's go to the essay. Now, matriculants, I found from experience that learners who really do very well in the essay questions, those are the learners that gives us the 80% and up. Okay, 60% and, and I really want you to set the bar high. Really set the bar I for yourself, okay? And then and you can, if you know your work, you really can. So what did I say right in the beginning? If you are one of those learners who has uh, time challenges, start with your essay, okay? Just write clearly the section heading, write section C, question five, okay? Uh, and also piece of advice, if you look at paper one, for instance, there's business environments and there's business operations. If you look at the subtopics, business operations only have two subtopics. That's human resources management as well as quality of performance. Okay? And I can tell you now, if I was a matric learner, I would have gone for operations. Okay, that's my advice. Uh, Although these learners are like environments too, but if you look at the legislation part, there's a lot of acts, okay? And you need to know this, because acts are particular, you know, you have to know the purpose of it, you have to know the impact, and there's particular aspects under the acts, like for skills development, you know, there's the learnership, there's the seekers, there's the NSDS, HSDS, Human Resources uh, Developments, and if you look at LRA, right? There is the purpose, there is the impact, uh, uh, actions that constitute non-compliance, penalties, that's basically that you need to know under each act. But then for LRA, there's also the rights of employees. So the, under each and every act, there's specifics, right? If you look at triple BEE, -E, there's the pillars, Okay, that stands out under, uh, but then again, we still need to know purpose, uh, the impact, actions that, you know, 
the business can comply to the act, what is non-compliance and penalties. Okay, those sections are under it, and then you look at the NCA, CPA, there's a consumer rights, which is added to that. So under each act, there's a, and, and I get it very bulk in a lot of info. Then there's also strategies, as we know, you need to know the groups of strategies. Like I said, if you know the strategic management process, everything that we do on the strategies is embedded in that process, right? The groups of strategies, uh, the names, etc., and then sectors. Okay, you see that sectors is often asked in section B. You use a scenario, right? You identify a challenge, you put it with the environment, and you answer the extent of control. Okay, so uh, operation seems to me to, to, to be the, the main player, right? But they have to know your work like this. And obviously, you will select then questions one, three, and four, and six. But you cannot now just study operations and know nothing of environments. Okay? Use your one pages and you can add more. Like I said, it's not adequate. You can uh, add more. And, and specifically, if you set the bar for 100%, you need to add and sit with your core notes and those one pages. Okay? Um, all right, so let's go to this essay. The essay, as you can see in your booklet, comes with a statement in the block. We call it an introductory statement or a preamble. Okay, now every statement in this block relates to the bullet points in your essay. Matrix, the bullet points of the essay, that's the body of the essay. That's what we want to see in your answer. And then and, and we want you to write a structured essay. In other words, you need to uh, use these bullet points and give us headings and skip a line in between. We don't want to see an essay, just one piece of information, and we have to sort. You know how cross we get? And never, ever make an examiner cross that's marking your stuff. Give us a neat, structured essay. Okay, don't worry, we are patient. I'm just giving you that information so that you can write neatly because it's, it's always nice to write it, uh, to mark a neat script. So you can see the preamble relates to the bullet points and the bullet points is what we want to see in your answer. In your booklet, we have numbered um, what you need to have in terms of reading. So let's go to uh, the essay. There's a statement. Okay, and can you see the verbs that we use in uh, the essay? Outline. And now you know what is outlined. What did I say? I said outline. You don't go into too much, much depth, but you have to give us a little bit more, right? And in section C, we want you to really write uh, explanatory sentences because we don't take essence in section C, okay? You have to write explanatory sentences, but with outline, brief explanatory sentences, a little bit more, because outline will earn you a double mark at the end of the fact. Discuss and explain. I think you know now. This is where we're going to use the split mark uh, technique. Right? We have to write a statement and a supporting statement for the second split mark. And what did I say? Yeah, you can see, even see with discuss three types. We give you a particular number of uh, strategies, integration strategies that you must explain. Uh, there's only three, so you will discuss those three. Explain once again the Porter's Five Forces model, the forces, explain, split mark. Advice, once again, higher order. Can you see? Uh, when evaluating strategies, the steps, okay, and advice will earn your double mark at the end of the fact. Now, you know from grade 10 that we have a specific format to our essays, all right? So, by number one, if you haven't done so yet, um, you will always start with an introduction, right? And you don't have to do the introduction immediately. You can always come back because remember, with the introduction, you have to um, 
write uh, an introduction that relates to these bullet points. It has to speak to the bullet points uh, nowadays. It cannot be a general introduction on the topic because this essay is on strategies. Okay? Um, you can see there. You can even give us a definition here of a strategy. Right? That will also do because there's integration strategies, etc. Okay? Uh, and write your headings, introduction, leave enough space because you have to have two separate points. And particulars don't give us one long sentence and expect us to give you two marks. We need to see that there's a sentence, full stop, and another fact. And even the introduction can also be in point form. Can you see the mark allocation there? It's just two marks, two single marks for your introduction. So we don't want a long introduction. Your mind must be on the body of the essay. After the introduction, um, you will skip a line. Obviously, we have um, number two here in your booklet. And now you can go to, we don't write the word body any longer. And there's reasons for that. Sometimes when you address some of the bullet points um, in the introduction etc it can be problematic okay so don't write the word body and skip a line after your introduction right so the first heading would be steps in developing a strategy so you can write it there by number two then you can go to and leave enough space i always say five facts is um, the magic number for the essay because that's the problem you don't know uh, how we how much marks we will allocate Okay, and if you look at past papers, we allocate enough marks for you to reach that um, 32 for, for facts. Uh, remember, when you are done with your essay, we do the placer, F for facts, and it's a max of 32. And the two of the intro and the two of the conclusion is included in that 32. Okay, so you also now know the cognitive verb, right? So for you know that you want to get uh, some marks. And if you address all the points in uh, the body of the essay, that bulleted points, the possibility that you will get to F32 is really great. Okay? So you will make your headings. The second headings is the types of integration strategies. You're going to discuss that. Explain, and you're going to explain, uh, make a heading power of suppliers, uh, and explain power of competitors, and explain... And, and then give us those headings, okay? Uh, and lastly, steps in evaluating strategy. So you can write all your uh, headings next to that numbers. And can you see there's a number six as well? We always end off our essay with a conclusion. And matriculants, the word introduction must be there. Okay, so you're right. And it's sad to, to see still to this day and age learners forfeit the L mark because they don't write the word introduction. And uh, it's no use. You write the word introduction and there's nothing under the introduction. It must be supported by something. Okay? Let us just look at the notes. Do not rewrite the preamble. What is the preamble? It's that statement in the block, that introductory paragraph. So what you will see is, and I'm sure your teachers have given you back your scripts after the June and the, the prelim, you will just get a capital R. Because it's not wrong, you've just repeated it because it's not supposed to be uh, rewritten. Okay, so you will get no marks when you rewrite that. So for the introduction, look at the bulleted points. Uh, it's on strategies, integration strategies, etc. And... Um, let your introduction speak to um, that four bullets, okay? And you can um, take some points there. Always take the shortest, okay? I think our brains uh, works better when the statement is a bit shorter. So you can write that um, uh, introduction. Then just two, two points that you will remember best. Let's go to the notes again. Avoid general introductions, not emphasize it. Uh, your introduction these days must speak to the bulleted points. Okay? 
and uh, only content facts will be marked. So, so you have to, because our essays in business studies is factual. You cannot give us uh, any uh, uh, information that you've just made up, because we're asking you specific questions, right? So now that you have written all your headings with the conclusion, you can always come back to doing your introduction and doing your conclusion. And with a conclusion, we just want one statement, right, that concludes everything, okay? And once again, the conclusion must also address that four bulleted points. Right, so when you write introduction and supported by something, you get the L mark, which we will allocate in the left-hand margin. That's a lasso inside mark, okay? And it must be supported by something under for you to get that mark. If there's a conclusion with something under the word conclusion must also be there with something under your second L. So L will be two. When you have all your headings, right? Because uh, that's the A now. It's for analysis and interpretation. So we look at how you break down your essay. We will give you, if you have all that headings, right? You have the four headings, the developing, blah, 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 up until the steps. In it. You get your first A in the left-hand margin there by the last heading, okay, which is the steps in evaluating strategies. That's just for giving us those headings, right? Even if there's nothing under it, you get that uh, first A, and you don't get a zero out of 40 at least. Okay, um, then we will mark, okay, there we go, the steps in developing a strategy, outline once again, double ticks, and we want you to study this version of uh, the steps in developing a strategy. It's very short, and you can see that um, we give you two marks just for saying that. So I'll give you a, a minute just to uh, get that down. Review vision statements, analyze mission statement. Uh, can you see what's wrong with this? Can I hear what's wrong with this? Oh, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it looks more or less similar like the steps in the manage strategic management process but it is indeed uh, developing a strategy, okay? So um, there's nothing wrong with it, sorry. Okay, let me just make 100% uh, over here. So while you take that version down, Okay, we will just going to confirm this because uh, something looks slightly off here, but okay. You can just stay there down so long. I'm just uh, looking at something quickly. So with regards to steps, there's steps in developing a strategy and there's also steps in evaluating a strategy. And please don't get confused, okay? And then there's the steps in the strategic management process, okay? So don't get confused amongst all these steps, all right? Um, can we move? Okay. The three types of integration strategies. And, and look at how uh, the, the cognitive verb here is discussed. So we're going to split the ticks and look at how we have awarded the marks for naming the strategy to, and for the explanation, we've split the mark there. Okay, so for a submax of six, um, we've marked there under each uh, strategy. 
So you see that we will mark up until a max of 16. If you look at these three strategies, submax of six, we will mark up until 16. Okay, all those six times three is 18, but we will mark up until uh, a max of 16. And once again, with that vertical integration, you must say forward vertical, okay, and backward vertical integration. What is the emphasis of forward vertical? Takes over their distributors, okay, to ensure the sales, okay, and distribution of the product. So factory taking over a retail store. Backwards, it's a backward movement. Business in the, uh, perhaps a business in the tertiary sector, let's use this example, uh, buys up a factory. Right, so that they can get their supplies. Okay, emphasis is on to ensure that uh, they have, uh, they take over their suppliers. You can highlight that. And for forward, take over the distributors down. Okay, so it's a forward movement. Okay, it's upstream here. You can see, what did I say? It's a business in the tertiary sector. Let's say a wholesaler or retailer buys up or merges with a factory so that they can ensure supply. Horizontal businesses merge in the same related industry that sells the same similar products. Okay, so two retail stores, um, well, let's say identity merge with Edgar's. Okay, that's a retail store. They both sell the same goods and services. So that's a horizontal. Uh, integration. Okay, three types. There's only three, and like I said, we will mark up until a max of 16. The next one is explain how businesses could apply the following quarters and be giving you the forces. So, all around, you need to know the forces because we can give it to you, right? To explain specifically the application. Or we can give you scenarios in section uh, B and ask you to identify the force. So these forces, very, very important. Okay, and what did I say about the quarters five forces? You need to know the exact name of the force. And don't leave out that power of, power of suppliers, power of buyers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but in this question, we want you to explain uh, the application of power of suppliers and power of competitors and threat of substitution or substitutes. Okay, I think I'm going to move on to 5.4. There we go. And I've highlighted for you certain keywords that will um, help you remember. Once again, explain as a cognitive verb, we will split the mark. Right, now the power of suppliers. What is a supplier? This is a business where businesses obtain their trading stock from. Okay, and sometimes they have that power over the business. Okay, uh, you can see the suppliers that deliver high quality products may have power over business because business can only obtain their product by that supplier. Okay, and no other supplier. And this is where the power comes from. The more powerful the supplier, the less control the business has over them. Um, if I can give you the example here, if you look at the supply of crude oil, okay, we know that there's only a few suppliers of oil in this world. Okay, the Middle East, then we have a source somewhere in Nigeria and a source somewhere in America. Right? Can you see it's only a few? suppliers and yes they have a lot of control over the whole world because of all businesses supplying fuel and then and all these products need to buy from them okay so i hope that uh, makes sense that example and then these suppliers because of the fact that they have so much control once again if i can get back to that supply of, of crude oil uh, they can influence the prices and we have seen Okay, what we pay uh, in terms of these uh, prices, all right? So we know that when businesses uh, set their prices, their selling prices, they need to take all of these uh, factors into account, right? And these uh, 
might be suppliers, might really influence uh, their prices. So there we, we go. We can see few suppliers have more control over the business, right? So we can say the more powerful the supply, the less control the business. Remember that uh, example there. Next one is power of competition or competitive rivalry. You don't have to remember them both. You can remember one. That also. And competitors, as we know, they're selling the same similar product service and may have a greater impact on the market of the business. Because we know the main aim of competition is to, to get the majority of customers. Because that customer, as we know, is the lifeblood of the business, right? And with competition and then businesses compete in different ways. And can you see when um, um, competitors have more power, can you see that when they have a unique or scarce product, then they will have greater power. Why? Because uh, that is authentic to that competitor, right? And, and, and customers will sort out that competitor to buy their unique product. And this is why they have a special place in the market, greater power. Business with many competitors in the same market has very little power. And here I want to use uh, the fast food industry. Right, you see how it's in sometimes concentrated in the CBD in, in one area, right? Many competitors, so it weakens the competitive power uh, of the business. Threat of substitution, and can you say, see, you can say either substitution or substitutes, threat of substitutes. Okay, what is a substitute product? We know that it is a, it is a product that satisfies the same needs. Okay, so businesses need to determine the sellers of these substitute products. Um, is it uh, the substitute product a lower quality product or higher quality product? Is it lower prices? Because you know in the economic climate, we as a customers really like to stretch our rent and if we can get a substitute product that will satisfy the same needs, okay, with the same quality at a lower price, we will go for that. So it's vital that first uh, point there that business assess um, the substitutes, the sellers, etc., and also the quality and their prices. And also, if the business's product can be easily substituted, it weakens or reduces the power of the business in the market, okay, like we know uh, groceries, for instance. We can easily substitute that uh, if, if, if we go to Peter Pay, for instance, if we are used to a certain brand uh, and it's too expensive, we will take the no-name brand, okay? Because we know that Peter Pay gives us quality. It's a no-name brand, so it helps us, right? But um, on the other hand, on the flip side, Obviously, uh, if it's not easily substituted, then, then it gives the business a little bit more power, right? If you look at uh, airline tickets, for instance, cannot just uh, swap it out, etc. right? So uh, can you jot down these examples? Um, if the business sells unique or scarce product, it will not be threatened or influenced by substitute products, okay? I always use... Um, the example of Coca-Cola beverage. Okay, Coca-Cola, as we know, dominate the market with their products. Um, and, and, and customers seek that out because they have a unique taste or what. Also, uh, sports brands, all right? Um, customers become brand insistent, insistent because of the fact that the product is unique. Okay, and that gives... Uh, the business more power because the customer will not substitute. Once again, what is a substitute product? It is a product that satisfies the same need. Because plus, if you look at this industrial analysis, two quarters, five forces, it is about how tough it is for businesses to um, overcome competition. Because if we put it on a diagram, we would put a competitive rivalry right in the middle. And an understanding of these forces will give businesses uh, a better position to compete, okay? Because we know competition as a threat that can lead to the closure 
of the business. Uh, just to refresh your memory, can you remember which two forces was not asked yet? Can you see? Okay, it was the power of bias, right? And the other one was threat slash barriers, right, of new entrants. Okay, that was the key that was not asked here. And once again, the exact name of the force. I'm going to give you time to just, um, in your answer, highlight that. Okay, and I hope you have a better understanding um, of it, of quarters five. The forces uh, that was asked in this essay. Okay, the next question is advise businesses on the steps they should consider when evaluating strategies. Okay, and um, we are done here now. We have our heading. And remember what I said about evaluating strategies? The strategy is already being implemented now. The business needs to see did the strategy work or not okay if it did not work the business needs to step in now right first look at what was the benchmark this is that look forward uh, and backwards etc right uh, and see is the uh, the outcome the one that was uh, the desired outcome according to the benchmark the standard that was set if it does not compare well then uh, obviously the business cannot just sit back they have to step in and take corrective action okay um i'll just give you a, a minute start to, to uh, the steward and then and then matriculants you need to do something that can help you remember like i have highlighted these keywords for myself so when I study, I will remember these keywords and build my fact around the keyword. Okay? But I need to make a plan. And you also, as a matriculant, to remember what you've studied. Okay? So when you study, um, seek out a quiet environment. Uh, put your phone down and or hand it into your parents. Okay? If you're not strong enough. Because that gadget can control people like nobody's business, right? So um, your mind must be on your work, okay? I think I'm going to move to the next one. There's the steps. And once again, the, the cognitive verb was advice. And what did we say with regards to advice? We... Give no split marks, but a double mark at the end of the fact. And can you see there, we've awarded a max of 10. If you look at the mark allocation, if I can just go back, max of 12, uh, max of 16, uh, max of 8, 2 there. Can you see this is even more than the 32 um, factual marks if you count it up. So if you know your work matrix, you will get to that F equals 32. Okay? So um, there's the steps in evaluating. I think we had it in a previous question. Okay? I always say to my learners, remember at least five. You know, start with three, but five is the magic number for your essay because it's a 40 mark question. You want to obtain, believe me, the maximum mark. You want to obtain that maximum mark. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll give you a minute more to just get that. Or you can just say refer back to because um, there was a question uh, of strategy evaluation. I think it was 2.7. We asked it for four marks there. Okay, so let's go to the conclusion. Double ticks, once again, a higher order. And we will always scaffold it out like that. We will start with outline. You can look at your essays, even now in the prelim. Outline, then it's discuss, explain, advise, or we would say recommend, or we would say suggest practical ways. 
but it's a double tick fault line. You can take your pen and, you know, make a double tick there above the word outline. Discuss. Tick, dot, 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 tick. That will indicate split marks. Explain. Tick, dot, 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 tick, split again. Okay? And advice, double tick at the end. And then, and, and like I said, there's... Um, Examiner can ask you to recommend that also higher order or suggest practical ways uh, to do something. Okay, so now we can't end of our essay here. Remember, you for all the, the, the headings, what did I say? If you just have the headings with nothing under it, we give you your first aid. And then the else, but the word introduction must be there, supported by something. Conclusion must be there, supported by something, the two else. Okay, then... The second A, when we find that you have 16 and up for F, we award the second A, okay? So that is the A's. There, I'm, I'm saying it again. First A is for using the four bullets as your subheadings. So just by writing it there, even without anything under it, you get your first A. And matriculants, you cannot, you know, forfeit that mark. Uh, second A is for 16 out of 32, 16 and up, all right? Uh, so there's our conclusion. We just want, can you see the mark allocation here? Any one times two, so we just want one point that we will allocate a double mark for. We don't want a long conclusion because we want you to spend time on that four bullets and give us, you know, at least five points under each, okay? Um, yeah, or if you can write six, that's also okay, but we don't want, um, okay, five is the magic number. That's my advice to my learners, all right? So now, <clears throat> you see we always indicate flasso. I have uh, explained the F, that's the 32 for facts, the L for introduction and conclusion, supported by something, the A for breaking down your essay, all headings, First A, F equals 16 and up, second A. The S is for synthesis. Now, it has to do with, and these days, is your facts under these bulleted points, is it relevant to uh, what we're asking you, or are you completely writing off topic? Okay, then you will get a minus is there where you've made that mistake. You completely write off topic because there's a difference between um, facts being wrong and writing off topic. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you will see there where the uh, mistake appeared. We will write in the left hand margin minus S. So then S will be one. The other thing is there's four bullet points in the essay. Right? If you only answer one of those bullets. Let's say you've only addressed the steps in developing a strategy. There's four bullets. That means it's less than 50% of what you need in your essay. Okay, if you answer two bullets, that's 50%, obviously. Right, so if you only answered one, then we must also indicate a minus this. Okay. All your facts are relevant, obviously no problems, you get S equals 2. Matriculants, we understand the S. And now, the headache is the O, originality. Here we want you to incorporate under two different headings one example. So you can give us a, an example perhaps under bullet number 2. And an example perhaps under bullet number four, or one example under bullet one, one example under bullet four. We just want two examples. And like I said, you have to incorporate it under different headings. Don't give us two examples under one heading. We will just award one mark. And what is uh, originality? It's something from the media, recent examples. You can take it so two years back that you can relate to the topic. With this one, it is integration, 
integration strategies, if I can think of an example, you can think of businesses that has uh, merged um, and there's, you know, the forward vertical, the backward and the horizontal. So you think of businesses, maybe the horizontal integration that has merged, okay, and that, that has, you know, caused them to be more successful. Um, and you can give us that example. All right, now that you know that strategies is a possible essay type question on the environments, Google those examples, okay? And um, the advice is what I always, if you can remember, if you write in blue, give us your originality in black and vice versa. It's not a must, but just, you know, for our eyes as examiners and markers to be drawn to your originality and try uh, specifically our learners who's really doing their, don't be content on standing on a 38 out of 40, please. Go for your originality examples. You know the possible essay type questions now. You have seen the prelim, you've seen past papers. Google your examples. And, and matriculants, the content did not change. Okay, CAPS is still the same. The examiner can just play around with questions. Okay, the format that you got in the prelim, prelim is also the same. Okay, um, you can see there one sentence that will earn you two marks. I have seen conclusions that's almost a page. Now that's craziness, matriculants. We just want one point. Okay, because your uh, attention must be focused on that four bulleted points as well as obviously two points under your introduction and two points under your conclusion. Okay, and some learners uh, sometimes gives us the, um, the originality under the uh, introduction. We advise against giving it under the conclusion. Just know that when you give an originality example, we cannot award it as part of the facts. We will just give the O in the left hand margin. Okay, so if you give it under the introduction, give your two points plus the example added. Okay, if you, but uh, it is more advisable to incorporate it um, under the headings in this bullet of points. Okay, there we we be asking you, don't forget to try and use recent news. That's for the originality. Okay, and you cannot repeat facts uh, in your essay cannot repeat facts because we read that whole essay. Believe me, we need to read all your responses that you put down in these essays. And we can clearly see when you uh, uh, repeat. Some business learners and, and business learners in general, they are very creative. Although yeah, we study a creative topic uh, thinking, but business learners, they would say one fact in different ways and they think as markers, we won't pick it up. Okay, so I think uh, rather study your work and write a beautiful essay that will earn you 40 out of 40. And then, then matriculants, if there's headings that you can give us, always give us a heading and an explanation. So with these strategies, you cannot um, explain something and you know let us now figure out what strategy you are explaining. Give us the name of the strategy, like Mrs. Gordon has mentioned here. You can just by giving us that strategy, you can earn yourself six marks. Okay? Always guide whoever's marking your script by giving us clear headings and space in between uh, these different sections that you have to discuss. Okay? Right. If there's no questions, we will move on. Right. Now we're going to go to operations. Um, and operations, as we've seen right in the beginning, consists of human resources management function uh, and quality of performance. Okay, so number 3.1. It was in the June um, question paper one, you can see there. List four, list once again, no explanations needed. Okay, no split marks. It comes with a particular number of facts. Okay, and it sources of external recruitment. Okay, sometimes learners, I don't know what happens uh, to learners 
When we ask internal, they give us external. When we ask external, they give us internal. All right? External is outside the business. Can you see there? Look at bullet number three. Uh, <clears throat> there's a whole range for the printed media. And if you give us all of that, you can only get one mark. So look in your core notes as well, those one pages. Um, like if you said newspaper supplies, we can only award one mark. So just be careful uh, for that. I would advise you also to rather say external headhunting because headhunting can also be internal. As a, a, So please just uh, add it there, thereby uh, headhunting. Once again, no explanations needed. Uh, and it's four marks. The next one, elaborate. And with elaborate, can you see there? We split the mark on the meaning of placement as a human resource activity. Grade 12s. Um, <clears throat> the human resources is fairly simple and is very logical. It starts there with where the HR manager identifies that there is a vacancy. Okay, and that vacancy must now be filled. So it starts with the job analysis. What is a job analysis? It's similar to manpower planning for this HR manager to see if there's enough workers to, uh, to perform all the tasks in the business. So that job analysis is also a very popular question, consists of job uh, description and specification. Okay, and when they're done there, they go to recruitment. Okay, after recruitment, selection, because they cannot appoint all people who apply. Selection, right? They draft the shortlist there. Next step is interview. Okay, and there's certain aspects that you need to know, right? Interviewer, interviewee, the time frame before and during. Okay, after that is the appointment, signing of the employment contract, and that contract is so important. You need to know what it is, what is in there, what makes it legal, how does it come to an end? And not only does uh, we uh, deal with it under HR, we also deal with it under the BCA because that act forms the basis of it, right? Then we have salary and wage admin. So the steps are quite logical, okay? Now, this question here is um, placement. And I don't know why learners struggle with placement. This is after appointment and, and, and signing of the... Um, the employment contract okay after that what did i say uh, salary admins also induction as an activity in there and continuous training and development so the processes of hr is quite logical placement is they found the uh, worker now so this worker must be placed in the right position can you see there a specific job is assigned to the selected candidate Okay, when placement happens, this candidate is now an employee. Okay, so now what the business does, they look at the skills, um, qualification, personality, the selected candidate, and see if it match the requirements of the job. Okay, and that they, they have seen in the candidate CV, etc. Uh, also with placement uh, matriculants, if they're not sure, they might go for a psychometric test um, to be able to uh, obtain is it the right position because a worker that is in the right position is more productive okay and will help the business achieve its goals okay right um the scenario there once again um you read the questions first and then the scenario and uh, highlight underline etc and um you can see there the, the verb, identify two components, and, and then boys and girls mark this popular. You will either get a straightforward question on the job analysis, right? Or we will give you a scenario like this, and you have to take out examples of the uh, job description and job specification. Identify two components, okay? There we go, job description, I always give advice. Remember by description, the D for duties and tasks, okay? Specifications, skills, okay? Write it there for yourself to remember because learners tend to swap it around, okay? Description is duties and tasks. And this means what the, uh, the worker needs to do. Can you see there? Answer phones, prepare meetings, 
training venues, sort and distribute mail, etc. Specification, what did I say? Skills, qualifications, and experience needed for the job. You see here, here uh, the business wants this person to have a matric certificate and at least be computer literate. So do something there, description, what did I say? Duties, tasks. Specification, that is for skills, and then you can go on qualifications and experience. Okay? Identify, once again, we want the concept and motivation. You write the sentence applicable to the concept exactly as it appears in the scenario. And matriculants, don't think you will get these two marks if you don't identify. Right? We mark the identification because this is what we ask first in the question and then motivate. Okay? And uh, sometimes it's motivate will follow there. So highlight there's two things that you need to do. But can you see what makes it easier? If you redraw this table, then you won't forget the motivation because you will write that uh, column headings there and you will see that you have to identify the uh, components and motivate. Can you see why we always advise you to redraw the table and answer in that format? Always matriculants, if there's a format, answer in that format, okay? And you identify first, and then you quote. Motivate by quoting. What is quoting? You rewrite the statement exactly as it appears in that block, okay? Because if it's wrong here, it's wrong there as well. If there's nothing here, wrong, wrong, and wrong, okay? Right. 3.3.2, discuss, discuss once again split marks, positive impact of fringe benefits on businesses. Uh, there you can see fringe benefits. You need to know the examples of this as well. The allowances, housing subsidies, medical insurance, etc. Can be used as leverage for salary negotiation, negotiations. Okay, leverage means they want to attract, okay, and they almost keep these fringe benefits as a carrot. Uh, oh, no, let me not use that. As, as something that can, uh, you know, get them that uh, most suitable worker. Okay? It increases employee satisfaction and loyalty. Tick. And then look at where so you have. To, it's vital that you respond in full sentences. Discuss for six marks. You know now it's split marks. So when you know your work, just three uh, points in your answer. And the advice is, if you're a little bit sure, one or two facts, write slightly more, slightly more, all right? Because we, if we don't give you a particular number of facts, we must go to that maximum. Improves productivity, tick, resulting in higher profitability, okay? Explain the benefits of induction and uh, matriculants. Don't confuse this with the purpose of uh, induction. Benefits of induction is they did something, they, they, they have completed the purpose, now it's making it better for the business. What is induction? It's more or less like orientation, okay? showing uh, the work around, etc. Okay? That's the purpose that I'm speaking of now. We want to ask uh, or, or want you to give us the benefits uh, of induction um, in your answer, right? Can you see there? Explain split marks. Minimize the need for ongoing. Can you see? It's, it's, it's aspects that makes it better for the business because they have fulfilled the purpose now. Right? So don't uh, get all tangled up and confused with the purpose of induction and the benefits. And I must tell you that induction is also very popular. I've seen uh, uh, the past papers, the recent past papers. Okay? So make sure you know induction. Then this is the bottleneck. Can you see there? TQM elements. My learners did not do very well, and I'm sure there's a lot of you that struggles with this uh, aspect of uh, total quality management. I don't know, but learners find it very, very difficult. Let's just quickly recap. There's the TQM elements. Continuous skills development, or you can call it education and training. Continuous improvements to processes and systems, 
And with this TCAM element, we know there's the PDCA model as well as quality circles. So you can write it down there, write this TCAM elements down so that uh, you can get it uh, in your mind. And if you have to draw a little icon for yourself to remember it by, so be it. Okay, continuous skill development, you can draw yourself a graduation cap there. Continuous improvement to processes system, system something that turns around because it's an ongoing process. Adequate financing and capacity, you might make a dollar or rand sign there. Monitoring and evaluation of quality processes and I, okay, total client customer satisfaction, maybe someone that's happy or a smiley face, right? Just do something that you can remember them. And with these elements, you must write the exact name as well, because our content, we've been dealing with it now quite uh, some time. Okay, uh, I'll give you a minute to just uh, write that down. Because um, sometimes we ask in scenarios where you have to identify, okay, like 3.5, as you can see there, and also, um, we, we, we ask you the impact of these TQM elements for large businesses. Okay, now, what is TQM elements? It is uh, actions that the business engage in, and in a total quality management matriculants is the whole business involving all employees, all departments, right? so that the business can in the end deliver that quality product and services. And this is what they need to do, okay? So once again, I'm going to uh, repeat by number two, you have to know the PDCA model there, as well as quality circles, okay? I asked, I think in the beginning of the year, my learners, I think it was in term two, what is a quality circle? And they looked at me as, you know, if I was in that classroom for the first time, I'm telling you. What is quality circles? It's a group of employees who's knowledgeable on quality, who come together regularly and they discuss issues related to quality so that they can make suggestions to management to improve, right? To uh, help the business to be successful. And then the role and importance of that quality circles is something that you must know. Okay, now that you have that down, let's move. There's a scenario and you have to identify two total quality elements applied by SEM, SEM Smart Clothing Manufacturers. Okay, once again, you read the question, you go back to the scenario. Uh, the first sentence, as you can see, that's just a statement. And a lot of learners are very... Um, thrown by the statement and they would identify um, specifically they have to quote. Now, SEM conducts market research to ensure that they know the needs of their customers. Okay, I'm sure that happy smiley face rings a bell here. Management ensures that they understand business operating and production systems. Okay, that number two rings a bell here. Okay, so there we go. I think it was uh, better this time around. Okay, total quality, total client, sorry, satisfaction, or you can say total customer satisfaction and continuous improvement to processes and systems. Once again, identify, double mark, no explanations needed because we just want the concept. Now, explain the impact of total quality management if poorly implemented by business. It's, it's also one of the sections that you need to know under uh, quality of performance, right? There's also the section of um, how can it reduce the cost of quality. See that you know uh, these sections. Explain, what did we say? Split marks for six, we just want three, okay? And uh, if TKM is poorly implemented by business, Matriculants, please write there, it's bad for the business. So in your answer, we need to say, to see negatives. Can you see that if they don't do it, they will set unrealistic deadlines that may not be achieved. Decline in productivity because of stoppages. Bad publicity, right? So highlight that and right there, it's uh, bad for business, negatives. 
So you cannot have good things in your answer here. Look at the placement of the tick. It's also a question that we continuously ask. Okay, so see to that uh, you study this section. Okay, and if you have the answer there, tick where we have placed the ticks. You see statement, supporting statement. Okay, if it's vague, you might just get one. What is the advice? If you're not uh, so sure, write a little bit more so that we can get to six. But I trust that you will study your work, and this is something that you really you need to know all aspects um, under quality of performance, the quality concepts. Um, if I can just quickly go to operations here, and I will mention, and you can jot down quickly. Um, you need to know the quality concepts, and you can write down quality. Quality control, quality assurance, quality management, and just make inverted commas where I say quality, then we can move a bit faster. Quality performance, quality, yeah, management systems. Now we always ask the distinction between quality control and assurance quality management and quality performance. You need to know those, okay? Because um, we always ask the difference. We can ask it in section B and we can ask it in section C. Uh, advantages of a good quality management system. Okay, I'm mentioning all the aspects of quality that you need to know, right? What did I say first? The quality concepts, because we like to, to distinguish and draw out the difference. Um, okay, and then what did I say? Advantages or benefits of a good quality management system. Very popular question, that one. Okay, then the quality indicators. Right? Yeah, we want you to know all the functions of the business. Because total quality management grade 12 is about... All these, and sometimes we refer to it as departments, but it's the eight functions. All of them need to be very good for the business to be uh, able to render the quality goods and services in the end. Okay, so what you can ask yourself when you uh, think of quality indicators, and I want you to write it down. What? can the business do in each of these functions in order to improve in that function? Okay? What can the business do to improve, let me put it that way, in that function? Okay? And now, it, uh, there's eight functions, and, and please, don't tell me you can't remember those eight functions. Three starts with a, a P. Please just write uh, in, in, in vertical there, P, P, P. One starts with a G, M, H, A, and F. So it's three Ps, G, M, H, and F. So just write here, please, Peter Pan, give me half a flapjack. That's not the names of the function, it's just something that you can remember by. Please, Peter Pan, give me half a flapjack. Okay, so the P's, production, public relations, um, purchasing, the G, and it's general management. Don't leave out that word general. The M is marketing, H is human resources, A administrative and f finance okay so for the indicator you need to already know the definition and when we ask indicators we don't want the definition what did i say what is it that you have to ask yourself what can management do to improve in the function like for purchasing seek out the best suppliers that can provide the quality etc etc okay for finance, okay, draft budgets, um, 
maximize profits by curbing spend anything that's relevant but we give you core notes okay right so that's the quality indicators another section is the tqm elements and i have given it to you you need to know them how to explain them as well as uh, giving us their impact okay the advantages and disadvantages of each of these elements for uh, large businesses right and when you give the impact you know it's uh, advantages and this don't write that heading advantages and disadvantages when you give impact under anything because just now you write an advantage and you heading and you give us a disadvantage so rather give us the facts and you can approach it from both angles when the examiner asks the impact okay um when we say positive impact we just want advantages negative impact disadvantages okay but evaluate the impact that's from both angles okay so that's tqm elements the other thing is um the application of the pdca model right and i i have a slide on that one the role and importance of quality circles okay and uh, it relates to what tqm element it relates to that continuous improvement of processes and systems you can see there. Also, the impact if, of TKM if it's poorly implemented by businesses and ways in which TQM can reduce the cost of qualities. That's everything you need to know under, um, under quality. Okay? So, um, and then you need to really nail this part of operations because this is the difficult part uh, we learn a struggle in the quality part. Okay, let's move on. You see, there is a question on the impact of one of these TQM elements. What did I say? Rather don't write advantages and disadvantages. Just give us the facts. Because if you you do it wrongly then you might not get the mark if you say does it and it's not then uh, it's a problem okay and when we say evaluate the impact you know it's advantages and disadvantages okay sometimes the uh, examiner might say impact and just use the cognitive verb evaluate then you must know it's uh, the advantages and disadvantages Okay, continuous skills development, and it's for large businesses. They have an HR department dedicated to skills training, which is a good thing. They can afford specialized or skills, skilled employees. What is bad about it, it demotivates employees if they do not receive recognition for their training. And also, if they have uh, the training, they, they earn the certificate, they leave for better jobs. Okay, you see there, uh, the mark allocation was, let me see. Okay. Was six, so uh, we have allocated and we split the mark here for six. Okay, I'm gonna move. Internal recruitment sources name any two name no explanation needed no split marks okay and only two answers required and guys can you see there it's for the internal sources it's it's wise to use the word internal with it so you can't just say emails because emails can come from the outside as well so rather say internal emails okay can you see the internal management referral office notice board or we can say business notice or internal notice internal um, is important and can you see bullet number one there's our range and you will just get one mark for that so always be uh, cautious when you answer like that now here's a quality indicator of marketing what did i say what must you ask yourself what can the business do in that function to become better to improve 
And before you can answer that, you need to have an understanding of what marketing is. Okay? So what can the business do? Marketing, as we know, is about putting the product within reach of the customer. Okay? So acquire greater market share through good customer service. Okay? Business will be able to reach more customers. Can you see there? What is market share? It refers to the number of customers. Use aggressive advertising. Can you see it will make marketing better to sustain the market share? Not just sustain, but to increase that uh, market share. Once again, can you see what is the, the emphasis is on? What I told you, what can the business do in that function to improve? Okay? All right. Define placement as a human resources activity. I think we have we had that in a, a, a previous question. Um, and it's the exact same answer, so you can just refer back to that question that we had before. Okay. Um, this procedure. Guys, there's so much that we need to know under recruitment. Okay? We need to know what it is. We need to know the procedure. We need to know the sources uh, or the types, rather, internal, external, um, and examples of these types, internal recruitment sources, external, the impact of internal recruitment, impact of external recruitment, and this procedure. And don't confuse this procedure with the selection procedure. Okay, the Human Resources Department has identified a position for an admin assistant. You have to quote, right? Um, then you see, once again, that first part is um, just a statement. Okay, um, I'm just looking at the scenario here. Okay, and it's correct in your scenario. The word position underlined is the M is missing. Okay, and quote, what is quote? We have to rewrite the sentence exactly as it appears in the scenario, and you will write the full sentence. This is easy marks, great 12s, man. Come on. Okay, explain the role of the interviewee. And um, I think I think the examiner was very kind to tell you that it's the applicant during the interview. So be careful. You cannot now give us before the interview. Before the interview is merely preparation. During is the, the interview is happening now. Okay? And this is the prospective employees answering the questions. Explain, as you can see there, split marks. Okay, so now the real McCoy is happening. Okay, the nervous interview is happening. It's during. So please, focus your mind when you write exam. Don't give us before when we ask you during. Explain for six marks, three points in your answer, and we will split. Can you see there? Greet the interviews. He's coming in now, or she, with a solid and friendly. Listen carefully and... Okay, make eye contact and have a good, so it's during, it's happening. Actual interview is happening here. Class, the interviewer, and learners constantly get confused between interviewee and interviewer, is a representative from the business, the interviewer. Uh, a lot of times it's the HR manager, okay? Um, there the impact of uh, internal recruitment. What is internal recruitment? It is inside the business. Okay? Uh, I don't know, sometimes learners even identify when we give them a scenario and ask them to uh, identify the type of they they get back also wrong. Internally is recruiting inside of the business and externally is outside of the business, new person coming in. Discuss split marks. Impact pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. What was the advice that I've just given you? Please um, refrain from writing those headings of advantages of, or disadvantages. Okay, just give us uh, it like that. As marketers, we know our work and we will see that this is an advantage. And, okay, because just now you get it wrong and then you don't get the mark. That's just a, a piece of advice. Um, okay. So there we go. 
the PDCA model. What did I say? What uh, TQM element is this one related to? To continuous improvement to processes and systems. And it's vital that you know the PDCA model. What does the element stand for? Plan, do, check, and act. Okay, so now you have to uh, identify two steps as it appears in the scenario. Okay, and once again, there's a format. What are you going to do? You are going to redraw that table and answer in that format. Okay, it will help you give us all the um, aspects that we need in the answer. Okay, identify, no split marks. It's two marks for you and then quote and you identify first and then you quote can you see there a number of regular customers cancel their orders before they that's just a statement a group of uh, in response a group of am employees make suggestions to manage about how and what should be done to improve the quality uh, processes and systems okay you see the step is planned and the one is they have assessed and determined whether the changes are working and if everything are going according to that check. Okay? And you quote accordingly. I don't think we're going to give this mark if you don't identify matriculants. Identify first and then. Right? There's the PDCA model. And I want you to quickly just jot down uh, that keynotes that I've made. Um, this model enables businesses to continually plan and improve. Can you see? There's that element, their processes and systems to exceed customer expectations, deliver exceptional satisfaction. The P stands for plan. Business should identify and develop a plan for improvement. So if you have to explain it briefly, then this is what you will write. Look at the difference between do and act. Do is they implement the change on a small scale. Right, implement the processes as was planned, and act is if the change was they implemented on a wider scale and they continuous because this is a cycle, it continues. Right, check they use data to analyze the results and they see if it's improving or not. They check, okay, as we've identified uh, in the previous scenario. Also, uh, I'm gonna let you quickly just write that down, okay. All right, um, can I quickly hang on, give you a minute to just uh, jot that down. Then I'm going to skip a few questions because it's actually a, a repeat of previous questions. You look at uh, 3.6.2, I want to stand still there. We have already had a question on 3.7. Then I want to go to 4.5, okay. 4.6, I have mentioned uh, the interview. Um, and there we ask you the role of the interviewer and interviewee before or during the interview. Okay, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to stand still with 4.7. I have spoken on induction. Want to stand still with the employment contract. Okay, and 4.8. Um, okay, 4.9, I will just speak on the wording of the question, right? Because learners really get confused when the examiner uses uh, that wording. Okay, I think you guys are done, so let's move. There's the quality circles. What is a quality circle? It's a group of employees with different skills and they come together. These people are knowledgeable on issues regarding quality. Okay, and they help management basically investigate what is problematic with regards to quality, 
and they uh, make suggestions, okay, and their role and importance, uh, class, it's been asked there in 362 is important that you know, okay, because it's always been tested. In your answer, or if you have your core notes in front of you, just highlight those keywords that I have highlighted. They solve problems related to quality and implement improvements, okay? Mm -hmm. The uh, cognitive verb there is explain, so we will split them up. They investigate problems and suggest uh, solutions to management. Okay, investigate problems, tick, and that latter part, another tick. Okay, and then ensure that no duplication. So just highlight those um, highlighted terms that I have there in the fact. Okay, for four marks, for explain, how many facts? Just two facts in your answer, okay? I'm gonna skip 3.7 because we have uh, had a question on that. Um, okay, just give you a minute to highlight that keyword there. Okay. All right. I think I can move on. I want to go to, it says 4.5, it's on page 14 in your booklet. It's the salary determination methods. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip that one, there we go. You cannot miss this answer, okay? It's piecemeal method. In matriculants, it's time-related method. It's a section that we ask continuously, so please, the exact names of those two salary determination methods. Piecemeal, according to the number of items uh, completed, and it's a system that you find mainly in factories. Time-related, it's the employees paid according to the hours worked. Okay, that word remunerate means payment okay so sometimes we give you a scenario and we ask you to identify the methods and quote okay and for you to quote uh, accurately you need to know the definition of um, that so let's go to 4.7 quickly that's something of the interview and i have said a lot on that now this is also one of the um, of the aspects and quality that you need to know. Now, outline ways, I think you know now, outline, I don't have to say anything. It's a um, double mark at the end of the fact. Uh, and these are things that when this is implicated, they can really reduce the cost of quality. Okay, I, um, the learners did re reasonably well in the uh, prelim in this. Okay, so see to it that you study it. They can schedule it to eliminate duplication of tasks. So it's, it helps the business do better, right? Work closely with suppliers to improve the quality, share responsibility for quality output amongst management and workers. Okay, so for four months, we just want two aspects. Now, 4.6. Name any two aspects of an employment contract. Right? What is that now? Okay, I have said that is also important for you. So let's go to that 4.6. Um, this is what is in the contract. Okay, name. Do we have to explain? No, ma'am. Right? How many aspects? Just two, and you keep to two. Okay. And this is something that you really need to know now. This employment contract, very important. What did I say? What is there to know about it? You need to know what it is, what is in there, because 4.6 is about the content. You need to know how it comes to an end. And you can write yourself three capital R's and a D. That is termination, retrenchment, retirement. Um, what is the other one that I can't get to now? Restructuring is one of them, but that's not the one that I'm looking for yet. 
retirement, retrenchment, resignation is the one that I'm looking for, and dismissal. Sometimes you give us a lot of aspects that boils down to dismissal, right? And you have to give us the heading and explain that termination. About the contract also, what makes it legal? So the legal requirements of the employment very, very important, okay? Now all of that, please, great jobs. Um, can you see there 4.8? That's the induction program. I'm not going to say anything about it. I have spoken on that. Can you see there? Explain the reasons for terminating an employment contract. I told you, write yourself three capital R's and a D. Retrenchment, retirement, resignation, dismissal. Okay, we just want uh, reasons for four marks. Explain, we're going to split the mark. Can you see there? Dismissal is in our answer there, and you have to explain it, okay? Um, and for valid reasons, because you know, according to the LRA, employees cannot just be fired. There's procedures, okay? But this employee did not uh, perform uh, his job description, as you can see there. And an employee could decide to leave. That is resignation, can you see there? By resigning voluntarily, okay? And if you explain retirement, you will say the employee has reached a certain has reached a certain age and does not have to work any longer. Okay, I think I have uh, explained it. Retrenchment is the business cannot afford the employees anymore, and the business has to lay off the employee now. The quality indicator I have explained at length. Okay. Um, Right. With regards to the essay, can you see there? What is that block called? The preamble or introductory statement. We cannot repeat the preamble because we will not get marks. We have to remember the format of the essay, okay? And I've dealt with uh, the aspects here in um, the essay, the recruitment procedure. I, I said a lot uh, in, in, in previous questions. We have to ask the verbs as it is there. In your final, you will see we will have to start with outline, explain, discuss, advise. Outline, double ticks. Explain and discuss, split ticks. Advise, double ticks. Right, then we start our essay with the introduction, supported by something. We write our headings, okay? And we end off with conclusions. So all in all, there's six headings uh, as your workbook is uh, giving you here and we just fill in the facts. And I say to you, uh, you don't have to start out with it. You can always come back uh, and do it because your mind needs to go into this body, but we still need the introduction and the a conclusion because you want full marks and you write us headings at least give us space in between okay incorporate two originality examples of uh, under the two different headings and your introduction must speak to the bulleted points as well as your um, conclusion all right so here you can fill in the facts um, for the essay. Ms. Gordon, are you still there? Okay. All right, so here, uh, matriculants, you will just fill in. I want to stand still with this last bullet, the legal requirements of the uh, essay. Once again, don't rewrite the preamble. Now you know what is a preamble. Beautiful word, eh? It's just that block, the statement in the block. And if you read the statement, it uh, speaks to all the bulleted points, which is um, the body of the essay. But we don't write body any longer, okay? And we just want two points, nothing more, because we give you two marks, and it's two separate points. Not one long sentence, and you think we're going to split the mark? Oh, no, it's two separate points, okay? Then we go to the procedure, 
I think we've dealt with the procedure uh, earlier on. Um, if you have the procedure in front of you, you can just highlight the keywords that I have highlighted um, there. Okay. And you can see there a max of 12. Um, so if you know your work, okay, and you're working, like I said, the five, the number five fits, uh, magic number, you've already got yourself 12 points. If you write, let's say, six, you have 12 plus two on your intro, which is 14. And with the L there, it's 13 marks already. Can you see how easy it is to get your marks? The impact, and just remember what I said about writing that uh, positive and negative uh, reading there. You see a max of 12, right? So you can build up. Um, benefits of induction, I've spoken about that. Um, there we go. What did I say? What must you know about the employment contract? You need to know what it is, what is in there. Termination of the contract as well as the legal requirements. Okay, um, that first one is um, the definition. Okay, I would rather let you start with bullet two and uh, not the definition because that's we want legal requirements. Okay, the employee and employee must agree to any changes. So the employee cannot just after the contract has been concluded and signed make changes by himself. Okay, uh, aspects of the employment cannot be negotiated, renegotiated during employment. So once they've negotiated, once they've signed, it stands for that whole duration of um, the employment. No party may unilaterally change aspects. Okay, it links to bullet number two. They must agree. Okay, the employee must both sign the contract. Okay, it should include a code of conduct and a code of ethics, and it may not contain anything that is in conflict because this BCEA forms the basis of this contract. And you see it's a max of 10. So we actually, if you have noticed, great clouds, we allocate more than the 32 for F. Okay, first A for all the headings, second A16 and up, S for... Um, we don't penalize if all facts are relevant O for originality examples, okay? Conclusion, there we go. Just one point, which will earn you two marks. Only one sentence. And don't repeat facts that you've uh, already said in the body of the essay, okay? Right, um, there we go. So that concludes paper one. I don't know if I'm going to get through paper two, but I'll try my best and see how far I can get. I don't know if Mrs. Gordon is there. My time is up until quarter past, isn't it, Ms. Gordon? Okay. All right. So there's paper one. I think um, what I've said uh, it's a little bit of home and it will make it better for your prep. So let's go to paper two. Paper two has a lot of topics. Can you see there? All right. Now, from experience, I found that learners do so much better in business roles um, as in business ventures. Because you know what gets to them in business ventures is that investment securities, investment insurance, and forms of ownership. Those are the culprits. But I've seen they, they do reasonably well in management and leadership, presentation and data response. Uh, they do very well there. But investment, specifically the shares and uh, all of that types and forms of investment, 
really gets to them. Business roles, on the other hand, they enjoy it a bit more, right? And uh, as you can see, it's even more topics than is uh, business ventures. But if you make business roles your main play, which I would advise you to do, then once again, your choices will be question one, three and four, and six. And you cannot just study business roles. If that's your main play, you take your one pages, okay? But also now note, one page is not adequate if you want 80 to 100 percent you have to add more facts okay because you're going to get 50 marks in section a on ventures 50 marks on rows question four 20 marks on rows 20 marks on ventures so you need to know the other topic right question three is just business roles question six is just business roles okay and you can see you can ask possible essays on professionalism and ethics Okay, and here it's very important that you know those challenges, uh, what is unethical challenges, apart from what is um, unprofessional for the business, those challenges. So you need to know that um, dishonest advertising and, and, and tax evasion and pricing of rural areas, that falls under ethical challenges. Sexual harassment, uh, unauthorized use of businesses' resources, as well as abuse of work time, that is professional, uh, unprofessional. Okay, you know, you need to know that apart. Don't be caught out here, please. Right? Um, team performance, also, we can ask, we can combine there. And social responsibility is also something that you've seen was in uh, the common paper. So let's move immediately to your answers. Okay. There's your answers. If you can take the answers down. And I think now you know the tricks of the examiner. Um, just 115. Can you please correct it, matriculants? It's supposed to be C. Because silent storm, that's nominal group. That's nominal group. So can you please correct 115? The reason why I did not correct it because I had struggles getting uh, to join this meeting, so I don't even want to press any button yet. Okay, so just uh, get your uh, answers down with a block statement in the uh, block. You have to rewrite it exactly as it appears there, and it's separated, as you can see there, by a semicolon. Okay, there's the distractor and there's the correct um, answer. For the matching of columns, what did I say? You look at the uh, words used in the beginning of uh, the statement in column B because it's the correct answer and it's the distractor. Okay, and for each concept, there's two possible answers and it's for you to identify. And whatever you've answered, rule it out. Then you don't have to look at that whole list again. All right? You need to get your um, technique also correct here. Okay? Let's go to... Okay, 2.1. Insurance. Okay, and, and then you know that there's risk that can be insured and there's risk that can't be insured. You need to know the examples. Okay, that's easy marks. State, no explanations needed. And these lower order like verbs, like name, list, state, give, without, uh, it, it always comes with a number of facts, as you can see there. Right? Um, you also should be able to give us insurable risks, okay? Outline the function of the JSE. Outline for six marks, double mark at the end in class. You need to mark this important, 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 okay? It's always in the paper, and it's under ventures, okay? But it can also be in question four. Can you see there? Outline, give us a little bit more, not too much depth, but enough to get that two marks there. The JSE, as we know, has to do with public companies. What is a public company? It's that company that ends with the letters LTD, 
or limited, okay? It's sometimes also referred to as listed companies because it's listed on this JSE. And this is a company that can provide or sell the shares to the public. The company that has to register a prospectus. We know the private company, PTY LTD, does not have to register a prospectus. Okay? But this institution is the platform where this public company, whose name ends with LTD, can sell their shares. All right, there we go. Can you see there's a change? First bullet has two answers that were previously separate. So you have to join them now for you. We won't give you uh, two marks for just saying raises primary capital. You have to say and encourages short-term investment. Okay, can you please just uh, uh, write that down so that you don't uh, think for four marks if it's asked, you can just write those two and separate. You have to give us that as uh, one uh, statement, okay? Right, now. There we go. Management and leadership, you need to know the uh, leadership styles apart from the, or separate also from the leadership theories, okay? The theories also determine how managers manage, but we term it leadership theories and then there's leadership styles, okay? Once again, identify, can you see there? And it's no longer secret we use these cognitive verbs in all our questions, as you can see there, okay? The first theory is according to different circumstances. When the circumstances or we might as well substitute the word situation there by um, circumstances, okay? It changes how the leader would lead. Then for transformational slash transitional, you can uh, recall one or the other, this uh, style or, or theory is applicable when the manager wants to do new things or wants to change. There's a drastic change and now they need to lead um, the followers in a different stage. The theory that was not mentioned there is leaders and followers, right? But this was now, these two uh, was applicable for that situation. Oh my goodness me, I can't emphasize how important this question is, okay? It can also be asked in a multiple choice where they would give you that in the question and give you different amounts. So take your calculator when you write uh, paper two. We always ask this calculation and the interest, uh, simple and compound uh, calculation. You need to have a calculator. Name the insurance clause that is applicable to YT in the scenario above and the Clause is average clause. Don't say under insurance. It's average clause. Okay? Now, what is the meaning of average clause? It states that if assets or properties under insured, the insured will not get the full value of the claim. Right? And we know there's a, a, a method that insurers use to calculate. And please familiarize yourself uh, with the difference between who's the insured and the insurer. The insured is the person or business taking out the insurance cover. The insurer is the insurance company, like outsurance, sunlum, etc. All right? So when I say insured, I mean the business or private person taking out the insurance. So the clause is average clause, and it's applicable to underinsurance. What does it state? It states that if property is underinsured, the insurer will not pay out the full value of the claim, and there you have to calculate. Always give us the, uh, the steps. You write the formula, then you substitute the values, okay? And because if you get something right, then we can work with your steps. So what is the calculations? Insured amount over the market value times the uh, loss or the claim uh, over one, okay? 
very uh, popular question you can mark it uh, popular okay the difference between assurance and insurance insurance is based on the principle of indemnity okay and indemnity we know that insurance is a contractual agreement between an insured and an insurer now you know who's the two parties okay now with indemnity is also a principle as you can see of uh, insurance security is also principle insurance is based on that principle and it's applicable to short-term insurance we know short-term insurance is uh, on an event that may or may not happen okay what is indemnity the insurer wants to place the insured back in the same position that he or she was before the risk and how does the insurer indemnify by paying out or reinstatement okay that's also another insurance concept what is reinstatement that is when the insurer and who's the insurer now the company either replace the asset okay or repair the asset okay and reinstatement comes into effect when goods are over insured right assurance it's based on the principle of security or certainty why do we call it assurance because in actual fact it's long-term insurance and this is why we call it assurance you also need to know the examples can you see there at the bottom now assurance is applicable to long-term insurance based on an event that is bound to happen what is that event matriculants it's the event of death right it is certain to happen it's just that we don't know the time okay just to refresh your memory what is the two other principles that's of mention here can you remember there we have indemnity and security other two is insurable interest Okay, and that refers to the object of insurance and good faith. Okay, both parties must disclose all relevant facts when they conclude that insurance contract. Okay, so those are the principles. You need to know these principles and be able to explain them and the difference between those two concepts. Okay, right, let's move. This is the part that gets to the learners, the types of shares, okay? Um, there's preference shares, quite a prestigious uh, share, ordinary, and there's different kinds of preference shares. So don't give us, if we ask you the different types of shares, then you give us the different types of preference shares. We can only give you one more, okay? There's also bonus shares, founder shares, and ordinary shares. Those are the different kinds. But you look at preferences there's different kinds of now you have to uh, identify the two types as provided in the scenario okay there's a a format what must you do you redraw the format okay and you answer like that because it helps you you identify first and then you motivate by quoting a full sentence okay some shareholders bought shares that will not allow them to receive past dividends dividends is the return on investment if the investment is in shares as you know okay and that's non-cumulative preference shares okay if they don't get past dividends but if they get dividends um, past dividends that's cumulative okay so just know the difference uh, others chose shares that allow them to share in the surplus profits that's participating preference shares okay and we have um, um, motivated by quoting there okay right 2.7 as you can see i've mentioned the um to the principles and you yeah you need to discuss any two principles what is the principles? I told you indemnity, placing the insured person 
or business back in the same position as he or she was before the risk, okay, by paying out in cash or reinstatement. What is reinstatement? Applicable to over insurance, the insurer can repair and replace the asset. That is indemnity. Security, applicable to long-term insurance, okay, and it is uh, based on an event that is sure to happen, the event of end of death, and it gives the insured peace of mind. That's security. Insurable interest refers to the object of um, insurance. Okay, so there's the principles. You just want, uh, we just want two, and this is how we've allocated. And can you see if you can give us a heading, you give us a heading and an explanation, please. Easier for us to allocate the marks. Uh, I was busy explaining insurable interest. That is first the object of uh, the insurance. What is to be insured? So an insured house is insurable interest. The car, all right? If it's a lady, the life of a husband is. So the insured, who's the insured again? The person who's taking out the cover must prove to the insurer that if that interest is removed, he or she will stand to lose financially. For instance, if the insured loses their house, obviously they will lose financially. They lose their car, they will lose financially. So what is insurable interest? It refers to the object of insurance, what is to be insured, okay? And then lastly, good faith. Good faith refers to the fact that the insured and insurer must be absolutely honest with one another when they conclude the insurance contract. They must disclose all facts because in the event, let's say the insured lied in um, when they concluded the contract. If there's a claim, that claim can be found null and void in a court. Okay? So good faith, absolute honesty. All right. Then suggest situations. This is, uh, once again, higher order verb uh, for four marks. Transactional leadership style. This is for good work, rewards, bad work, punishment. So there's almost like a transaction. Okay, and this is a um, year where the leader can apply this leadership style. And it's, it, it's, you can see good work rewards, that is to boost the morale. And when the workers have low morale, and morale has to do with job satisfaction, then they can implement the style. When deadlines must be met on short notice under pressure, the leader can also use uh, this leadership style. Okay, um, I think I'm going to skip the part on presentations because learners usually do very well in presentations. Okay, let's go to this question. Plus, these factors, I cannot emphasize how important it is. Okay, and there's a possibility that you might get it in question four. This is why I'm standing still here. Uh, return on investment, and the return on investment is different uh, types of investment. I told you previously that if the investment is in shares, this is what the investor will get back. The return will be dividends. Okay, if it's a, a, a cash investment, we know it's interest in the form of simple or compound interest. If it's property, it's capital gain. Okay, then another factor is also risk. And once again, main. No explanations needed, okay? And adhere to that number of facts. And um, identify, and you need to know the form of investment, okay? Separately from the type of investment. Okay? I think it's stated like that in your corners. Okay, there's the um, investment form. Um, he chose an investment listed on the JC with no charges and commission. Okay, let me just go back. There we go. Government or RSA retail savings bonds. Okay, so so 
the retail savings bond is quite popular, so please proceed to that you know the form of investments and type of investments are part. Okay. Then uh, presentations, I said I'm going to skip. So I want to go to 2.4. Okay, now if you look at 2.4, explain how the following factors could contribute to the success and or failure of a public company. This is a question that is continuously being asked, okay? And like I said, you might get it in question four. Um, and it's on a public company. There's different forms of ownership, the partnership, as you know, the private company, etc. Okay, now, I don't know why learners struggle with, with this, because we started it in grade 10. It's just that now we approach it from a different angle. We expect you to know the characteristics of these forms of ownership, because now we expect you to know how capital can lead to success or failure, legislation lead to success or failure. For public company capital, you know that it's, it's, it's easy for them to uh, mobilize large amounts of capital because they can sell their shares to the public. Okay, so good thing is for the success, they can access long-term and therefore as good long-term growth opportunities. They can list on the JSE, okay, which gives them exposure to more potential investors. Okay, or the bad thing about it, they need large amounts of capital in order to start. Okay, if they don't mobilize that, we know the registrar won't allow them uh, to be incorporated as a public company. So they need to sell a minimum amount of shares. That's a bad thing about it. Okay, uh, and growth is limited if they don't mobilize that minimum subscription, as we call it, or minimum amount of capital. Legislation, okay, and we know the formation of a company as a form of ownership, and there's different kinds of companies private, public, state-owned, okay, that we uh, non-profit company. It's based on the Companies Act. So there's lots and lots of procedures, okay, and companies must comply with the laws because even their formation, the establishment, is based on uh, the Companies Act. They have to register documents, various documents, uh, etc. okay? All right. So that is the criteria that can lead to or that can contribute to success. And, and you can approach it from both angles. Can you see the bottom, the top part under capital is uh, the success part. The bottom part was the failure part. Okay. There you can see high formation establishment expenses require large startup capital annual audit, and we know it's compulsory that um, because they sell their shares to the public and the public needs to see their financial statements. Okay, the AGM, as you know, is also compulsory and it's long, lengthy procedures. Even that meeting is also based on, on, on the company's act, how they have to go about. Okay, all right, let's go to 2.5. This is compulsory insurance. Just to refresh your memory, what is the other two? This is the road accident fight. Other one is, other two is UIF and COIDA. Okay, and you will see that all of this compulsory insurance makes provision for funds. This is the road uh, accident fund or RACS, road accident beneficiary scheme. The UIF makes um, provision for a fund, okay, and that UIF has different benefits. You need to know that benefits is important. COIDA also makes provision for a fund, the workers' compensation fund, okay. Um, it's compulsory, so it's by law that businesses must uh, comply to these compulsory insurance. The importance, there we have it. Okay, how is this fund, uh, how did it, did, do they get their money? Every time the business puts or we put um, petrol in our vehicles, uh, a levy goes to that fund. And we are not even aware, we just go to the garage and we say 200 unleaded, 
okay and it's included in, in in that money okay and that's the purpose uh it ensures road users against negligence of other road users if a driver dies as a result of the negligence of another driver then uh, money can go to his uh, next of kin and the injured parties and negligent are both covered by the raf okay and uh, these cases are usually uh, put in court uh, as to confirm who's the negligent party okay evaluate the uh, advantages of unit trust as a form of investment okay and there the examiner was quite specific so we just want positives okay evaluate can you see split marks there all right what did i say uh, form of investment and types of investment you need to know uh, it separately from one another four point um we have already spoken on the factors right we have had it in a previous uh, question so i want to go to 4.2 you need to know this okay and the ventures it's very important the importance of insurance okay it protects against dishonest employees and we know it's that uh, fidelity insurance it protects business against losses due to the death of a debtor uh, and there's more examples we just want uh, for four marks discuss which we will split the mark off. Okay, um, so there's a lot of questions on in, uh, on insurance. What is important is, is there's examples, you need to know it. The principles, you need to know that. Compulsory insurance, the different forms. Okay, discuss specifically the benefits under insurance. And just note with COIDA, the business only pays. And a lot of times learners think it's when there is an occupational injury or disease was contracted, it's the responsibility of the business. No, that money must be claimed from a fund. And that fund is administered by the Department of Labor. It's called the Workers' uh, Compensation. And there's a claiming procedure. Okay, obviously the Department of Labor will come out, and I'm speaking COIDA now. Um, and they will come and establish if the worker was negligent, if the business had sufficient uh, safety measures in place, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and then we've already dealt uh, with that. Um, okay, so with corridor class, it is uh, the emphasis is on that compensation. And who pays? The business don't pay out when there's an injury. The money must be claimed according to that claiming procedure from the Department of Labor, an employer is uh, obliged to assist the worker to claim. And the worker must make, make known to the employer that, you know, within reasonable time that he wants to claim or she wants to claim from the fund, because there's a procedure that must be followed. Okay. Uh, the, can you see the type of investment option? You need to know it apart from the form of investment, right? It means that the headings uh, is very clear in your corners. Okay, let's go to the essay. Let me just quickly identify there. That is ref. And plus, if you can uh, give us the abbreviation, better for you, all right? Um, but just be careful, if you miss one letter, it can also be problematic. This is UIF, you see there, job losses, um, examples of insurable. Remember in the previous question, we had non-insurable risk, so it's important for you to know these examples. Okay, the clause, we dealt with that clause. This is a very popular question. Advantages, let's go to the essay. Once again, preamble. What is the preamble? It's that statement in the block. And the preamble, if you read the statements, relates to each and every bulleted point. Okay? And can you see, with the essay, we have to ask you that cognitive verbs, we have to start with outline, explain, discuss, advise. Outline, double ticks. 
explain, discuss, split ticks, advise, double ticks. All right. But we start our essay with the introduction. Okay. You see there, the introduction must be supported by something. You get your all mark and the two marks there. The two marks contribute to F equals 32. Do not rewrite the preamble. Avoid general introductions. Why? What did you say? Your introduction and conclusion must speak to, to um, the bulleted points in the body of the essay. For insurance, matriculants, can you get two points, the shortest points there? Um, and once again, in your booklet, we numbered the headings that you should have in your essay one to six, right? One and six was introduction, number six was conclusion. And then number two was, uh, if you go back, the difference between insurable and non-insurable risks. And you have to give two examples. Can you see there? You have to outline, so you have to tell us what is insurable risk. This is risk we can say that we can take out insurance for. Non-insurable risk is risk that we can't take in it insurance out for and, and two examples. We tell you exactly what to do, right? So there we go. You have to tell us um, what it is and give us two examples, okay? And we have uh, marked up until a max of 10. Not insurable risk, you had to give us um, the meaning thereof and two examples. Okay, and give us clear headings. So number two was that difference. Uh, it would also be nice if you could have done it in a table, right? Easier for you. In our essays, you can even do uh, tables. All right. Uh, number three was if I can continue. The principles of insurance and uh, sorry for the, the typo there. Principles is P L E S. Okay, that principles is the ones in your school in the office block, the street guys. Anyway, there's you have to discuss um, indemnity and security. Once again, indemnity, or you can say indemnification, you don't have to say both is applicable to short-term insurance, okay? As the insured is compensated for specified or proven harm or loss, okay? Insurer, who's the insurer now? It's the company agrees to compensate the insured for a loss specified in insurance in return for premiums paid. What is a premium? That's the money that goes towards insurance and it's paid by the insured. You see, we're using these terms and we need to be very clear on it. It protects the insured if that specified event may occur. And now you can see that insurance, if we can draw the difference between that and assurance, is on an event that may or may not occur. But let's say if it um, occurs, then the insurer will indemnify. Okay, uh, and payouts will be made. made. And what did I say? There's also in the case of over insurance, the reinstatement. Okay. But then you know how it works with these companies. They will come and investigate if uh, the specified event took place, which is the risk, of course. Security, it's applicable to assurance. What is assurance? It's long term insurance. Okay, so predetermined amount will be paid, and that's endowment policies that matures at a certain future date. Matures means it pays out, and it can be quite comprehensive because people build in life insurance and, and all of that in one policy. Okay, and it is uh, on a predetermined event, as we know. What did I say? It's that event of death which is sure to happen, but we just the insured just don't know the time. And security as a principle provides a peace of mind and security. Also to the insured person that if he or she is not there anymore, then his dependents uh, or will be taken care of, right? Or if the uh, insured retires, 
financial provision uh, is there, okay? So just note it's principles, P-L-E-S of insurance, right? We want the two, you can see we've split the mark for max of 12, okay? What is the other two, just for argument's sake, that we haven't mentioned here? What did I say? Insurable interest and good faith, okay? Three types of compulsory insurance, UIF, you have to explain it, okay? And the UIF has uh, benefits, those benefits are also very important. Um, you can see this, it pays out when the, uh, the worker loses their jobs, okay? Uh, it's also when someone falls on, dependence benefits, uh, and then you can explain it also by means of the contribution. The 2% is broken down as follows. The employee pays and it's deducted from his salary and the business pays, okay? There's also seek benefits, adoption benefits, et cetera, all right? And when you explain, you can also explain it uh, as part of your explanation. Then the road accident fund, I have spoken about that, so I'm not gonna stand still there. Coida, I also said a lot there. Uh, and all this compulsory insurance makes provision for fine, fund. You don't have to say uh, workers' compensation fund with COIDA. You can just say COIDA, okay? Uh, who pays out when there's an injury or disease? It must be claimed from that workers' compensation fund. It's not the business who pays uh, out when there's an injury. The business, just understand me here clearly, is the one contributing to uh, the money that goes into that fund. So only the business pays towards this fund. Look at UIF, it's the employee and the business paying there. All right? So COIDA, only the business pays. And the injury must be uh, sustained at the workplace. Right? Obviously, uh, representatives of the Department of Labor will come in um, investigate. And you know that uh, if a worker was negligent, then there's also consequences there. Okay, if a worker dies as a result of an accident, um, the compensation will go to his uh, defendants, as we know. Okay, right, so there's compulsory insurance. What is it? UIF, REF, or REFs, and COIDA. And then the next thing is advise businesses on the advantages of insurance as you can see that this question repeated itself a lot so it's very very important when you are there we give you your first a for all the headings that's there second a if you have f equals 16 and up second a i have explained the s's i've explained the l's and the o's so i think we can proceed so there's a nice conclusion for you, second L, and we just want one point, okay? And don't repeat any facts that you have already uh, mentioned in the body uh, for us there, okay? Right, and what did I say with regards to your conclusion and your um, introduction? It must speak to... Um, the bulleted points, the body of the essay, okay? It cannot be just a random introduction and random conclusion. You must look at that four bullets and then say something that can conclude the essay uh, uh, in that. I know some of your teachers taught you that some of the facts that you did not use in the body of the essay, you can use under the introduction conclusion, which is okay, but, you know, um, I write it in a way that it's a conclusion, that it's not hanging, and um, as an introduction, okay? But once again, you cannot repeat facts. And uh, we can either give you two or nothing. So if we are in two minds, we get the two marks anyway. Okay, business roles. Um, ethical business practices, know the examples. Because there you can see we want what's ethical. We can also ask you what's unethical. Okay. Um, 
what's professional and what's unprofessional. You need to be able to identify from scenarios, as you can see there.